The Gear Shop at the ballpark at Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to fear the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseballs. The Gear Shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuffed BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark at Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at bridgeportbluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop, perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Advertising with the Bridgeport Bluefish is a sure way to hit a home run in your community. Since 1998, nearly 3 million fans have spun the turnstiles at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Supporting their local team and Fairfield County's local businesses sponsoring the Bluefish is just the right thing to take your business in the direction you want. The proof is in the numbers. More than 70% of Bluefish partners renew their sponsorships annually, and the best part is there are tons of ways to get involved. Billboards, in-game promotions, giveaways, Fish Vision video board ads, radio spots, and much more. If the economy is sinking your business, it's time to get swimming with the Bluefish. To join the Bluefish team now, call any of our front office sales representatives at 203-345-4800 for more information. Behind everything you're searching for is something you're actually looking for. We welcome you to the ballpark at Harbor Yard. The Bridgeport Bluefish about to take on the Sugarland Skeeters in game number two of this three-game series. Hello, everyone. I am Perry Miles. It is great to be here. The Bluefish have lost four consecutive games, scoring two runs in each of those four games. But last night, it can be summarized by one inning, one fateful inning, that nine-run frame in which 14 batters stepped up to the plate. The Bluefish, without that, gave up five runs otherwise, but it could have been a whole lot better had Toby Stoner been able to continue with the same kind of success that he had in the first four innings. The Bluefish are hoping to recover, and they'll throw Gilbert De La Vara coming off of his best start as a member of the Park City. Six innings of one earned run baseball and six base hits as he picked up the Vic D. No decision in that contest. The Bluefish wound up winning the game by a score of six to four as the Bluefish came back from a three to nothing deficit in that contest. He'll be opposed by Bobby Livingston. Livingston is one of the top pitchers on the ball club and he's done, done quite well this season, but Livingston has plenty of experience in affiliated baseball. He has not completed more than five and a third innings though with the Sugarland Skeeters. He's made it to the big leagues twice, once with the Seattle Mariners and once with the Cincinnati Reds back in 06 and 2007. Record wise, one win, one loss, an ERA of 5.40. For the first time in Skeeter's history, they are hoping to win four consecutive games. The Bluefish hoping to avoid a five game losing streak, get back to the winning ways. When we come back on the Bluefish broadcast, I had an opportunity yesterday to talk with Isaac Hess, the pitcher for the Bluefish. He described about what has unfolded over the past week against the Somerset Patriots and perhaps the Bluefish will be able to recover from their recent setbacks. Then it's off to starting lineups and first pitch from the ballpark at Harbor Yard. I am Perry Miles. We'll be right back after this on BridgeportBluefish.com. America's pastime. Summer's here and it feels pretty nice. Baseball and hot dogs and refreshment on ice. Some games are early, some are at night. But there's always a beer man with ice cold Coors Light. He's the most reliable player in the game. All it takes is calling his name, so even if your team doesn't hit any dingers, you'll have frost-brewed refreshment at the tips of your fingers. Thank you. 
Raw Food Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, with great beer comes great responsibility. I call this one best girlfriend ever. It had been a long day and an even longer week, so I headed toward the kitchen, refreshment I did seek. But after swinging open the fridge, I saw the most horrific sight. Not a single cold beverage, not a single Coors Light. I grabbed my keys, it was time to hit the store. But stopped when I heard a knock at the door. It was my girlfriend, bearing gifts of Coors Light. Best girlfriend ever? You got that right. Raw food, Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, with great beer comes great responsibility. A poem entitled Coors Light Summer. It's a Coors Light Summer, hot babes all around. Backyard barbecues are where you'll be found. It gets pretty hot out, but it'll be all right because Coors are filled with ice cold Coors Light. You step outside, many skirts galore. Be your garden for the ball game, that's what's in store. It's gonna be a scorcher, but there's hope in sight. Refreshment awaits, Frost Brewed Coors Light. Thank you. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, with great beer comes great responsibility. We welcome you back to the Bluefish pregame show. Perry Miles with yesterday's starting pitcher, Isaac Hess. Isaac, yesterday you gave up four runs in the five innings. It seemed like you were not going to get into trouble until the very end. What was the issue yesterday? Um, my command was a little bit off um, from what it has been in the first few games I pitched. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that was. Um, I walked the first hitter of the game. That's never going to set the tone very well. Um, you know, first hitter usually I'm just trying to go right after him, and I was, but I did get, I got squeezed a little bit by the umpire, but then again, you know, it's never the umpire's fault, so, um, you know, it happens, and my goal is to always give our team a chance to win, I think I did that, I didn't have a sparkling outing, but I always want to grind out there and give our team at least a chance to win and keep us in it. 13 game road trip can't comes, came to an end yesterday, and today is first home game. Does it feel good to be back at home uh, once more? Absolutely. I mean, it's always good to come home after a long road trip. And we did have those two days in between, which, I don't know, it, you know, it was a little bit of a bump in the road right there. It's a good thing, but then again, it kind of throws you off the rhythm a little bit. So it's not good that we ended the, the road trip like that, but we're going to come back strong here on the home show. I'm confident of that. Now, you have been playing with the Bluefish. This is your first year. You've played in independent baseball before with a condition with your hip. Explain to the fans out there who may not have listened to the broadcast earlier this year, what the deal is with, with that hip? Uh, well, when I was 19 years old, I had a total hip replacement. So they actually went in and gave me a brand new hip, just like an older person would have. Um, you know, everybody says I'm too young for that. And I was 19 years old and I got it, which is a very rare condition that I got it done, but I was a candidate for the surgery. and. Um, it was going to enable me to get back on the field because it was an obstacle that was keeping me from getting cleared to play by Washington State University. Um, I got the procedure done and um, it'll be seven years on July 25th that I've had the surgery and I've pitched all the 500 innings with it. Um, it feels better today than it did the first day. I'm confident in saying that every day that I wake up, I you know, work hard to maintain it. and stay flexible and stay strong in all areas of my body and it's a shame that it's kind of been the thing that's kept me from getting to the next level but if there was something that you could tell the scouts out there based on your experience based on your success in independent baseball and also your success in AAA with the Mexican League what would you tell the scouts um, it's really not the scouts that I'd have to be talking to because the scouts don't really have a problem with it it's the workers compensation people that are the risk assessors, if you will, I guess, that really have to come down and make the business decision whether or not a team um, should take me on for their organization. Um, they believe that I think that my risk highly outweighs my reward. Maybe if I threw 99 and I was left-handed and 6'5 or something, and they think I could be in the big leagues tomorrow, then my reward would outweigh my risk. Who knows? But I don't think any one of us is going to 6'5 anytime soon. No, no, but I'm saying if that were the situation and I had a hip replacement then and I lit the gun up with 99 instead of 90, 91, then maybe I get a chance. But, um, you know, at this point, I'm not letting it keep me from staying positive and staying in the game. I love this game. I love showing up every day. But I, I just want to address the workers' compensation people because I just think that it's silly to not give them a chance when I know that I can compete at that level. Um, but i got to just let my pitching do the talking and stay in it. I mean, it's my fifth season, so I've got to keep it. 
first day you came to the Bluefish, was there an interview process with Willie Upshaw when, when you got together maybe with the manager of the Bluefish? Was, was he asking you a series of questions of what you had done in the past and all of that? Regarding my hit or regarding, regarding, regarding your pitching, your overall pitching, what you threw, everything? Not really. Um, I think that, you know, at this level, your track record kind of speaks for itself for the most part, and then you get out there, and then, you know, a manager can see after you've thrown about 10 pitches, you know, kind of what's in your arsenal, whether or not you have it. And that's really, that's kind of how the game boils down to once you get to this level. You can either do it or you can't. I think, you know, I came out here in our inner squad games and you see what manager sees what you got and then you go from there. Earlier today in the outfield, I noticed that you were exercising with great amounts of intensity what are known as plyometrics, if I'm not mistaken. What, what is the exercise that you use and how has it helped you to develop as a pitcher and help to adjust your hip because you've had to go through so much in your career? Um, I wouldn't label it as just plyometrics. When I'm out there, to be honest, my foundational priority is just to show up and give everything I got. I don't have necessarily an ABC routine. Um, I kind of just freestyle it and I go and I listen to what my body tells me. I listen. I just try to push it as hard as I can if my body tells me to back off on a certain day, then I'll back off. I mean, it's a great day out. I pitched yesterday. Usually the day after I pitch, I try to try to crush it as much as I can the next day and work out hard because I know that I got a lot of days to recover. So um, it's immensely beneficial to my hip and my overall body and I think my performance as a whole. I feel better this season than I've felt my, my body and, and overall I feel better this season in response to start days and the day after. I don't feel sore today. I didn't. Hey Bluefish fans, have you heard about the clubhouse? Conveniently located in Fairfield, it has an unparalleled team of baseball and softball instructors offering private instruction, camps, team training, rentals, and best of all, the chance to learn from an all-pro team, including Mike Porzio, former MLB pitcher, and the Bluefish's very own Willie Upshaw. Open seven days a week, stop in and meet our team, or call us 203-292-8700 and visit us at the web, theclubhousect.com, and get the major league experience. This is Kyle Zaleski. Thank you for tuning in to Bluefish Broadcast Network in 2012. Here is the Terry Mott. This is Terry Mott. Batting third, right fielder number 39, Jason Bach. We welcome you back to the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Perry Miles here right before game two of this three-game series between the Bluefish and the Sugarland Skeeters. Last night was the first ever matchup between the two ball clubs. It was all Sugarland, 14 to two winners. And because of that victory, one of the few times that the Skeeters have won three consecutive games during their history. Matter of fact, the Sugarland squad, the first expansion team since 2008 when the Sugarland Skeeters, or rather the Southern Maryland Bluecrafts were the team that was involved in the expansion by, and the first Grand Slam was also collected by the Sugarland Skeeters as well. Jason Botts, Josh Presley have been formidable in this lineup, and it appears as if the manager, Gary Gaietti, has opted to switch out some part of its rotation. In other words, they are not going to place Josh Presley and Jason Botts back to back in this contest. Let's take a look at the starting lineups, beginning with the Sugarland Skeeters. Bubba Bell is in center field. He'll lead off. Drew Locke is in left field, batting second, while Jason Botts hits third and plays right field. Ophelio Castro, who did quite well yesterday, bats fourth. And Josh Presley, bats fifth, plays first base. Johnny Van Ostrin, the third baseman, bats sixth. We had an opportunity to talk with Van Ostrin before the game began. Ben Harrison, the former Southern Maryland Blue Crab, the designated hitter, batting seventh. Iggy Suarez bats eighth and plays shortstop. And Kay Johnson, what a story this catcher is. One, he gets up to the plate, or when we introduce him on defense, we will bring up several of his accolades, one of which took place this year. And they are supporting Bobby Livingston. One win and one loss with an ERA of 5.40. And this pitcher has done a solid job so far, but it is expected that he will continue to expand on what he has done this season. Not throwing more than five and a third innings in each of his starts, 20 innings total, seven walks, and 10 strikeouts for Livingston fastball. Curveball changeup. Several pitches that are, will be utilized by Bobby Livingston. Meanwhile, 
for the Bluefish behind Gilbert De La Vara. It is Kennard Jones in left field. He'll lead off. Pedro Lopez is batting second and playing second, while Prentice Redmond is in right field batting third. Luis Lopez is the designated hitter batting fourth. Meanwhile, Ramon Vasquez is batting fifth and playing third base. Brock Peterson, the first baseman, bats sixth, while Colin DeLone occupies center field and bats seventh. He has been mired in a little bit of a slide. He's 0 for his last 11 in his at-bats. Eddie Rogers is the shortstop batting eighth, and Angel Flores bats ninth and does the catching. One little note about DeLone, we had an opportunity to talk with him. He is not considered a slump because he hit a couple of ropes yesterday but was unable to really record a hit. He feels like because he's getting back into his rhythm rather than having day-night doubleheaders and 10:35 starts, that his clock is beginning to work the way that a baseball player is. And he is so detailed with his routine and so on point that if he goes off that path just a little bit, it may alter him, maybe not that day, but a couple of days following the first time that he did not practice or did not get his appropriate work in the batting cage. He understands the way that his swing is. Gilbert De La Vara, he has been getting better and better each start lasting longer and longer in his outings. Four starts, no wins and one loss. An ERA of 5.09, fastball 92, 93 miles per hour. The curveball, the, the changeup as well. He will feature those pitches, but Gilbert, part of a starting staff, an ERA of 5.64 this season, and it has precipitously increased over the course of time. 111 and two thirds innings by the starting staff of the Bluefish this season. The Bluefish umpiring crew, or the Atlantic League umpiring crew, Ronnie Whiting is behind home plate. The first baseman is Mark Facto, and he also is the crew chief. The third base umpire is James Pattison. The Bluefish entered today in second place, but they are only a game ahead of Southern Maryland for third place in the standings, although with the early tiebreaker belonging to the Bluefish winning three out of four in Southern Maryland, it's about two games instead of one. And the Bluefish a game and a half behind Long Island while the Sugarland Skeeters find themselves in an interesting scenario as well. They are eight and 13 on the year. And they are still ahead of the York Revolution by a half a game for, la for third place in the standings. Both the Lancaster Barnstormers and the Somerset Patriots lost yesterday. Both teams at 12 and nine atop the Freedom Division. When we come back on the Bluefish broadcast, we'll have first pitch from the ballpark at Harbor Yard. You're listening and watching to Bridgeport Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. I'll return right after this. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pace of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold a commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, New York, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Inc. Miller time. It's a rallying cry to the men around you, the ones that have become your brothers. A call to beer is answered with... A night where your crew gets down to the task at hand that may or may not involve running tables, firing up the grill, or getting the band back together. Just a few choice words spoken to the right men, men who crave a light beer that's never light on taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Great beer and great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate the game. 
celebrate the passion. Baseball is different in a lot of ways where the history of the sport means so much. Uh, and, and it's something we should never, you know, never forget. And I think the Hall of Fame has a way of reminding us. Any time uh, that I've visited, it's just I'm like a little kid. You people at the Hall of Fame have done a great job of uh, preserving uh, the history of the game. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Connect with Cooperstown at BaseballHall.org. I am here with Joey Jasseride of Big Sports Research. And the twilight glass gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. A beautiful rendition of the national anthem performed from just behind home plate. The Bluefish and the Sugarland Skeeters are ready for baseball. It is Gilbert De La Vara on the hill. The left-hander has reached as high as AAA baseball in his career. The left-hander's been improving every time out. Fastball, curveball, changeup, that is what you're going to get from the southpaw. More of a ground ball pitcher than anything else. Eight out of his 13 outs other than strikeouts were via the ground ball and several of his base hits were through the ground ball as well as the southpaw continues to throw a few more pitches. When I had an opportunity to ask him yesterday why it was so much different against Camden as opposed to the other starts, he said, I just felt a little more comfortable out there and sometimes it's always about comfort level, not necessarily how hard you throw, but your ability to feel confident in the pitches that you throw and, and feel loose out there, and he certainly felt that way. He is a former AAA ball player for the Kansas City Royals organization in Omaha, and the left-hander has thrown his final warm-up pitch as Angel Flores gets the call for behind home plate for the Bluefish today instead of Machete Louis Rodriguez. Ramon Vasquez, Eddie Rogers on the left side of the infield, Pedro Lopez at second, Brock Peterson at first, Kennard Jones, Colin DeLone, and Prentice Redmond from left to right in the outfield. One big move today. Daryl Jones, I believe, was sent over to the San Angelo Colts. He was traded during the offseason to the Bluefish, but now it appears as if he's heading back with Doc Edwards and company in the NABL. The first pitch is underway. It is a strike over the middle, 0-1 to Bubba Bell, the center fielder. He is 1-4-5 in the series. He had a single and a run scored yesterday. The next pitch surfaces outside. The count at one ball, one strike. One guy that was at the ballpark today, former big league first baseman, Willie Ibar. He was a major factor for the Tampa Bay Rays a few years back as the pitch is lifted foul to the netting. One ball, two strikes. He also really played for the Angels and he was quite a formidable force in big league baseballs. He makes his way to the Park City. The one two on its way from De La Vara. Fastball planted low, two balls and two strikes. It is Bubba Bell, Drew Locke and Jason Botts. Found out a few pieces of information about Bell besides his baseball prowess. That time he did not show his baseball prowess. He swallowed over the top of an off-speed pitch, strike three as Bell goes down. He 
is a crossword aficionado. Gary Gaetti, the manager of the Sugarland Skeeters, noted that, but he also said he could beat Bubba Bell any time. He says that the Saturday crosswords are the most difficult ones, and then after that, it is the, the weekend edition with the Sunday. Sunday New York Times, Sunday LA Times, does not matter. Gary Gaetti will take that on and challenge Bubba at the same time. The first pitch to Drew Locke is over the middle, 0 and 1 to Locke. The left fielder yesterday had a double, a single, and a shot. That home run came in the ninth inning, a two run blast. The next pitch surfaces on the outside corner, 0 and 2. Drew Locke, Triple A teammate of Colin DeLome, who is playing center field today. Plenty of speed out there as he's angled towards left center. The 0-2 drops low, one ball and two strikes. The ballpark at Harbor Yard at 6.05 first pitch. A decent crowd tonight for early evening baseball. And then tomorrow closes out the post-Mother's Day weekend celebration with flowers and bluefish photos. All the goodies. The one, two, swung on and poked into center field. It drops in just to the right of center for a base hit. Cullen DeLome fires the ball into the second baseman, Pedro Lopez, in line with second base. It is a one out single for Luck. And it sets up Jason Botts, the switch hitter, going from the right side. Now, Botts most of the time has hit from the left side because of the plethora of right handed pitching in the Atlantic League over the years. But when there is a lefty, he's not too shy about going to that right side and using it to his benefits as he slings his elbows back up and waggles the bat. The first pitch is struck foul to the right side. The count at no balls and one strike. Potts with six home runs on the season. But he had three strikeouts last night and Flew out to center, also grounded into a fielder's choice, six to four. Botts, a former big leaguer with the Texas Rangers. Him and Josh Presley are very tall. Botts, six six, Presley, six four, six five. Next pitch, trails low. There's a challenge by Angel Flores, but after a while, Mark Facto declined, saying that Botts did not swing. One ball and one strike. Top of the first inning, no score. Runner at first base, that is Drew Locke. And the infielder is playing slightly back with the second baseman, Pedro Lopez, veering more towards the middle. The next offering is right on the edge. Right on a fastball. A light is beaming down on the field. The sunshine is Almost prior to the stadium shadows creeping in towards home plate. It should not be a very good time for the hitters for a little bit. And then the outfielders will have their fair share of problems soon enough. The two strike offering is looking high in the air to shallow right center field. Redmond charges forward and he makes the play as he stutter step for just a moment for out number two as Drew Locke moves back to first base on the F9 to set up Emilio Castro. Both teams did not score any runs until that Bluefish dreaded fifth when nine runs came across and the Bluefish were looking for all kinds of answers. Ophelio Castro has played baseball for quite some time. Back in the mid 2000s till now, the two out pitch is a fastball inside, one ball, no strikes. And the one thing that Gaetti preaches to every one of his players, don't worry about the fundamentals. Aggressively hit the baseball. Do, do not care about top hand or, or any of that. Aggressively swing at it. If you can play, he'll, he'll play you. If, you. if you do not, then he's not afraid to say, hey, you cannot participate today. Next pitch is outside, two balls and no strikes. When Gary Gaetti was in the middle of his career, he always preached, swing away that was his motto and yes he, he often said that he would strike out on that outside slider the 2-0 well inside and low three balls and no strikes but be free to swing the bat as you please small town guy 
who worked his way through the Astros organization, worked with the Major League organization for the last two and a half years before getting his first managerial job with the Skeeters. 2-0, fastball inside, or rather 3-0, and that makes it ball four as Castro takes his base with a two-out walk to set up Josh Presley. The first baseman, Brock Peterson, moves to talk with Gilbert De La Vara as Presley moves Christine, forward. Presley. No relationship with the King, Elvis Presley, in the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I'm sure the Country Music Hall of Fame as well, Nashville, Tennessee. But Presley is a former AAA ball player, and there were some wonders as to whether or not he would make it back to triple a or even the big leagues the first pitch slides low one ball and no strikes presley had this quote for the star ledger courtesy of andy mcculloch there's a fine line between having that meaning getting into affiliated ball motivating you and having it consume you many of these players would love to get it back but it is much more difficult once you are out of the system than when you are in it when you're in it you could bat 270, 280, and make your way through, especially if you have a decent sized contract or an investment by the team to try to help you move up. The next offering on the 1 0 tilts to the outside corner, one ball and one strike. But if you're in independent baseball, they have bigger investments than the people that are going to be transferring leagues from the ALPB to whatever it is Pacific Coast, International League or any of the double a organizations the next offering is fouled to the left side a ball and two strikes he said i think it motivates a lot more as you get older than it does consume because you enjoy you appreciate the game the way it is you love the game the way it is and many of the players that are on here not many all of them love to play the game otherwise why would they be out here participating they are going to strive for the majors. 1-2 is lifted foul to the netting. Count remains at a ball and two strikes. Tomorrow is Bluefish Photo Giveaway presented by Wade's Dairy. And also, it is the post-Mother's Day celebration presented by Hanson Flowers. Let's not forget about All in Family Fun Sunday where kids get to run the bases after the game and they get to have their autographs signed. Baseball memorabilia signed as the curveball twists outside. Gilbert stares in, but De La Vara does not get the call. Two balls and two strikes. Players such as Prentice Redman, Eddie Rogers, Gilbert De La Vara, many of the Bluefish players, be out there signing autographs for the kids. 2-2 two, two from the lefty. Fastball outside. Three balls and two strikes. Gilbert has only walked four batters this year. He, doesn't, he says he hates walking batters. He'd rather give up a hit because he never felt like he gave himself a shot if he walked the batter. He's already walked one today, and he's in danger of walking Presley. Presley leaves the bat like a statue before he asks for time. He's had some foot problems in the past with the Somerset Patriots. But he's been able to cover, overcome some injuries. And he has loved the fact that he has come back and played with his family watching. That is always important, especially later on in your career. Presley would like to hang out with his family a little bit more often after the games. And be able to live at home. The 3-2 is chopped on the ground towards short. A high roll for Eddie Rogers, who delivers a cross in time. And that retires the side. Ophelio Castro was at second base, but Drew Locke was almost all the way towards home plate uh, after the throw was made. But it turns out the 6-3 is successful. No runs, one hit, two runners left on, end of a half. No score from Bridgeport. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Perry Miles will be right back after this. Have you heard about the clubhouse? Conveniently located in Fairfield, it has an unparalleled team of baseball and softball instructors offering private instruction, camps, team training, rentals, and best of all, 
chance to learn from an all-pro team, including Mike Porzio, former MLB pitcher, and the Bluefish's very own Willie Upshaw. Open seven days a week. Stop in and meet our team. Or call us 203-292-8700 and visit us at the web, theclubhousect.com, and get the Major League experience. Baseball legend Henry Aaron reflects on his Hall of Fame legacy. And I think that since I played for the public, they need to share what I did in my life as first baseball. It's the proudest moment of my life to give everything to the Hall of Fame. I often tell people they need to get and see it. There is no other building in the world like the Hall of Fame in baseball. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the legacy. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Mike Piazza talks about the Baseball Hall of Fame. It just connects you with the history of the game and uh, the, the tradition of this game and how far, how important this game is to, to the fabric of society. It's something I use to bond with my father and I will always, and I love to, to sort of teach my kids uh, the history of baseball. Preserving history, honoring excellence, connecting generations. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Shark tooth, screwdriver, skeleton teeth. Bluefish baseball returns on the air as Bridgeport takes on the Sugarland Skeeters. Bobby Livingston makes his way to the hill for the Skeeters. Bobby Livingston, one win and one loss, an ERA of 5.40 this season as Kadar Jones enters the batter's box and is ready to hit for the Bluefish. It is a different, a slightly different lineup for the ball club today. No Joey Gathright and implement Pedro Lopez instead. The first pitch is over the middle 0-1 to Kennard Jones. 3-41 on the year, 13 ribbies for Jones as he takes another one, this time dives low, one ball and one strike. The third baseman is Jimmy Van Ostrin. Iggy Suarez is over at short. Ophelio Castro at second. And Josh Presley at first. Cade Johnson is behind home plate. As the 0-1 is on its way. A bunt shown, but then pulled back. It's called a strike anyhow. And the count runs to no balls and two strikes. According to the sign now, it's corrected at one ball and two strikes. Cade Johnson hit. His first home run after missing the last six seasons due to shoulder injuries as the pitch is chopped up the right side, but kicks foul. The count remains at one and two. Very interesting story. First at bat for Kay Johnson after missing six straight years due to a torn laden for him and eventually shoulder surgery in 2010. He hit a home run off the Long Island Ducks. First at bat. That is one of the more incredible stories. And he, at the time, or before this season, was coaching high school and running one of the baseball clinics down there. Another one was also run by manager Gary Gaetti. The two of them met. He said, why don't you come catch a bullpen? So Cade Johnson caught a bullpen. He wanted to play a little bit of baseball. He has. And even though he's not coaching the high school team anymore, he still would like to play as the pitch is served into shallow center field. It drops in for a base hit as Jones leads off with a single to center field. Bubba Bell brings the ball in, sets up a runner at first base with nobody out, and it sets up Pedro Lopez. Every time it seems that the Bluefish had their leadoff hitter, they just have been unable to get on. Joey Gathright in the last four games, Joey Gathright has been unable to reach base in his first at bat. We gave you an interesting statistic about leadoff hitters and their ability to get on. The Bluefish five and six when the first base runner for the opponent does not reach as a throw to first is not in time. Bluefish player did not reach, or rather the opposing team did not reach first at bat last time, but the team lost anyhow. The Bluefish are seven and three as the Bunnets have to squeeze up the first base side. It is a foul ball. A, almost a great bunt by Pedro Lopez as it drifted up the right side. 
but it slowly curved foul. Almost a perfect bunt. That would have been a base hit otherwise. Lopez already was at the second base bag before a glove was put on that. Very simplistic action from the Bluefish. Lots of hitting and running, stealing bases. And the Bluefish early on were doing that quite well. And Colin DeLome going over 11, he was even thinking, hey, look, the only reason why I don't go through any slumps anymore or not too many long ones is because I have the speed and I could bunt to get on in case I am struggling. Build the confidence and draw the infielder slightly in. Change the rhythm of the game. Throw to first is not in time. Lopez this year, 304. He's driven in five runs, batting from the eighth spot most of the season. Setup is outside, pitch on its way, but attempt up the right side, but kicks foul. Two strikes to count. One major injury for the Skeeters. And that just so happens to be their catcher. And they are hoping to get the catcher back for a couple of months from now. They don't know when he's going to return. That was the assessment by Gaetti, which is why Kay Johnson has been playing a little bit as the pitch settles low. Down at one ball and two strikes. And yesterday, the starting catcher, Octavio Martinez, was there as well. Morton has been hurt with the shoulder problem, and they don't know how severe it is. The one-two runner goes, pitches chopped on the ground towards short, and fielding forward to make the accurate throw is Iggy Suarez. Because Jones took off early, it prevented a double play ground ball. It winds up just being a six to three out for Lopez and sets up Prentice Redmond. Willie Upshaw believes that Redmond is one of the best power hitters on this team, if not the best. And Redmond has been showing his consistency at the plate. He has two home runs and 12 RBI but he did pick up a couple of hits yesterday. Another multiple hit night for Prentice as he takes a pitch on the inside corner, owing one. He has the most multiple hit nights other than Kennard Jones on the team. Redman has seven and Jones has had nine multiple hit nights. Usually that reflects on a very high batting average. The 0-1. Grounded softly towards third, handling on the backhand Van Ostrin, and he throws to second, nothing doing. And it, I believe it will be ruled as an infield single. Prentice Redmond was about three fifths down the first base side. By the time the ball was grabbed by Van Ostrin, he did not think he had much of a chance to grab Prentice Redmond. It turns out to be an infield single as runners are stationed at first and second for Luis Lopez. The designated hitter, 257 on the year. Was 0 for 2 with a walk before he exited the game as he was pinch hit for. By Angel Florence. The first pitch to Lopez lines up with the outside corner 0 and 1. Plenty of fans at the ballpark tonight, especially on the right side. They gathered down the middle as well to enjoy a great ball game. The 0-1, what appeared to be a changeup outside. One ball, one strike. The left fielder, Drew Locke, is playing very deep in the outfield. Bubba Bell, slightly forward from center field and angled more toward left center. The right fielder, Jason Botts, relatively shallow as the next pitch is low count two balls and one strike. The same way that Gary Gaetti felt that every hitter should be free to do as they please as long as they are busting their tails and doing their best or at least trying their best. That's all that really matters. A two on his rip right to third handled 
by Van Ostrand on the line drive and L5 sets up two outs for Ramon Vasquez. It's the same way, aggressively attack the baseball on defense, which is the way that he played when he was the third baseman for Kansas City, the second baseman on many other teams. And he won a World Series ring in Minnesota. And the one player that he really did talk to was, was George Brett. It wasn't about baseball when it came down to that. Private conversation between players and coaches, of course, and players and managers. But then you also had those conversation player to player, and they would not just talk about baseball, they would discuss about current events and, and other interests that they had. In fact, it's a detailed account as the pitches dribbled up the third base side, but veers to the left of the third base bag, 0-1. Gaetti, a character at that. So is Willie Upshaw in a different manner. Different interest, more reserved than anything else, although he has the ability to captivate the room. Both managers do. Otherwise, with the experience they have, they probably would not be the managers of this team. They have great experience and, and get the attention of the players as the next pitch is on the outside corner. 0-2, oh and, and remember this. Gaetti is also getting accustomed to the players that he has, what their abilities are, and at the same time, implementing his ideas. The 0-2 is slapped to shallow left center field. Iggy Suarez calls everybody off before he's called off by Drew Locke, who makes the catch. The left fielder records the final out of the frame. Two hits, two runners left on, no runs in the inning. End of an inning. No score from Bridgeport. You're listening and watching the Bluefish Broadcast Network. I am Perry Miles. We'll be right back. What do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pace of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold a commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Inc. Miller time. It's a rallying cry to the men around you, the ones that have become your brothers. A call to beers is answered with... Order me a Miller Lite, I'll be there in 10. A night where your crew gets down to the task at hand that may or may not involve running tables, <laughs> firing up the grill, <laughs> or getting the band back together. <laughs> Just a few choice words spoken to the right men. Yeah. Men who crave a light beer that's never light on taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Baseball is different in a lot of ways where the history of the sport means so much. Uh, and, and it's something we should never, you know, never forget. And I think the Hall of Fame. We are in the... Top of the second inning from the ballpark at Harvard Yard. Bridgeport and Sugarland scoreless. As Jimmy Van Ostren steps up, the Canadian takes an inside pitch. The count one ball and no strikes. More of a hockey fan than anything else, although grew up playing baseball, grew through the affiliated ranks. and It's one of the few times that he's been in a really hot climate in Houston, Texas. The pitch rotates inside. The count runs the two balls and no strikes. Big time hockey guy, actually skated before he first started walking, which is interesting to note. The 2-0 fastball high, three balls and, and no strikes. He's never competed for the World Baseball Classic because the first two batters that were selected were Joey Votto and Justin Morneau. You're really gonna take those, those two behind this guy as the pitch is low for ball four. And Jimmy Van Ostrand takes his base with a walk. And Van Ostrand, He's a third base, first base combo guy. He plays third for Sugar Land. At the same time, he was also playing first base when he went up through the ranks. 
Now he stands at first base. Not that great of speed from Van Ostrom, but he did have some pop yesterday. Ben Harrison moves forward. He's got some pop as the pitch is right over the inside corner, 0-1. At some point, you would expect Josh Presley to hit some home runs. Ophelio Castro has been able to get on base with, with efficiency this year, but Harrison is perhaps the most most interesting person that pitches rip foul to the left. Harrison is probably the the bread and butter guy, if you will. If if Harrison does well, then Sugarland probably wins the game. He's that kind of, he's that kind of impact player. He's got tremendous power to left center field. Maybe not Willie Mo Pena power, but still it's pretty good. He hit a home run to left center yesterday. Setup is toward the inside corner. The next pitch is an inside out swing that's served down the right side out of play. No balls and two strikes. Many managers for Ben Harrison before that, before this year, encouraged him to take inside out swings, perhaps to use the fundamentals. And sometimes managers were over managing the game. Gary Gaetti believes swing away. If you're slightly out in front, pull the ball. Do what you are strong at as the 0-2 is upstairs. One ball, two strikes. If what you're strong at is not what is making you successful, that's a different story. One ball, two strikes, and nobody out. A runner at first base in Jimmy Van Ostrin. Ben Harrison at the plate. Bluefish center fielder. Colin DeLome angled towards left center. Everyone else playing pretty much straight away. One, two. Poked into right field and pretty well hit. Prentice Redmond scampers back, stops, and makes the play. He had to go full speed back just to corral the baseball. Not much win today in the ballpark to drive that baseball further. And after the F9, it brings Iggy Suarez to work at the plate. The wind is still a little bit out towards left field, gusting 5-10. to 10. But... Two, really not met playing much of a role. Same impact as yesterday. The ball will be held in a little bit towards right field. Go a little bit further in, in left and left center field. It should not have too much of an impact. The one out tosses inside, one ball and no strikes. Plenty of Atlantic League action today, which includes the Long Island Ducks and Somerset Patriots, two squads that own at least a share of first place in each of their respective divisions. The 1-0 from De La Vara is lifted foul right side to the upper deck. One ball, one strike. And of course the Liberty Division matchup between Camden and Southern Maryland. Let's not forget about the Freedom Division matchup between York and Lancaster which is probably the biggest rivalry in the Atlantic League. They are so close, 20, 25 minutes apart on the on Route 30 in PA. The 1-1 one, one is a check swing going through the zone, a ball, and two strikes. Iggy Suarez, plenty of experience at the shortstop position with Somerset, with Lancaster, Played in affiliate baseball as well. So he has a slightly open look. The pitch is fastball guided inside. Two balls and two strikes. When asked if the cold weather had anything to do with the comfort level that had improved against Camden, Gilbert Delavaro responded, no, not at all. It was not the weather. He just felt more comfortable. 2-2, two -two, swung on and missed. Strike three. Beautiful off-speed pitch from De La Vara. And he strikes out his second batter of the game to bring up Cade Johnson. Johnson, the catcher, has had one home run, one memorable home run at least, and that was his first at bat after missing six years of professional baseball due to shoulder issues. Two out tosses right on the inside edge, 0 and 1. He had shoulder sur surgery to replace a torn labrum back 04. He did not quite recover from that. 2006, he decided to 
give it up for a little while. And then 2010, he had another surgery to try to play again. But this time, this play goes to second base where Pedro Lopez delivers to first for the final out of the inning. A 4-3 to three put out to end the second. No runs, no hits, and one runner left on base. End of an inning and a half, no score from Bridgeport, Connecticut. You're listening to Perry Miles on BridgeportBlueFish.com. We'll be right back. When you heard about the clubhouse, conveniently located in Fairfield, it has an unparalleled team of baseball and softball instructors offering private instruction, camps, team training, rentals, and best of all, the chance to learn from an all-pro team, including Mike Porzio, former MLB pitcher, and the Bluefish's very own Willie Upshaw. Open seven days a week. Stop in and meet our team. We'll call us 203-292-8700 and visit us at the web, theclubhousect.com, and get the Major League experience. Baseball legend Henry Aaron reflects on his Hall of Fame legacy. I think that since I played for the public, they need to share what I did in my life as first baseball. It's the proudest moment of my life to give everything to the Hall of Fame. I often tell people they need to get and see it. There is no other building in the world like the Hall of Fame in baseball. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the legacy. Connect with Cooperstown at BaseballHall.org. Mike Piazza talks about the Baseball Hall of Fame. It just connects you with the history of the game and uh, the, the tradition of this game and how far, how important this game is to, to the fabric of society. It's something I use to bond with my father and I will always, and I love to, to sort of teach my kids uh, the history of baseball. Preserving history, honoring excellence, connecting generations. Connect with Cooperstown at BaseballHall.org. Shark tooth, screwdriver, skeleton key, golf tee from the golf trip that you never went golfing on, grill fork, tuning fork, fork fork, the lucky fishing lure you snagged Alan with, sorry Alan, drumsticks, chopsticks from the place you met that Dallas-based flight attendant, a motel key, let's not talk about the motel key, a spark plug, a domino, a house key. How do these things make Miller Lite from a can even better? Find out May 2012. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Hello, my name is Joe Bateman. You're listening to Perry Miles on BridgeportLucis.com. We bring you the Bluefish and the Sugarland Skeeters in the bottom half of the second inning. So far, no score. And there have been a couple of base hits for Bridgeport and one of those for Sugarland. The first pitch in the second inning dealt over the middle of the plate, no balls and one strike to Brock Peterson. He's followed by Colin DeLome and Eddie Rogers, 6-7-8 in the order. No expectation for Peterson to punt based on the Van Ostren positioning, halfway between the lip of the infield and outfield edges as the next pitch surfaces outside. One ball and one strike. The Bluefish and Skeeters will get together seven times before the season comes to a close in the first half as the next pitch is a check swing going through the zone. One ball and two strikes. It appears that Daryl Jones will be heading back to San Angelo, Texas to compete for the San Angelo Colts. The one-two is swung on and missed strike three. But Brock Peterson, because of Willie Ibar being in the stadium today taking some BP he may be taking some opportunities at first base as first strike out of the game for Bobby Livingston and the next pitch is swung on and grounded to the first base side foul the count had no balls and one strike A perfect night shaping up between the Bluefish and the Skeeters. Blue skies, not a cloud in the distance. Second straight day here, third straight overall, because in Somerset there was not a whole lot of that either. The 0-1 whiffed. No balls and two strikes as DeLome swung over the top. DeLome hinted that you may see a bunt from him. Three homers on this short season. 
And double digit RBI as well. The next pitch is squibbed foul to the left. No balls and two strikes. He felt as if his routine was broken up, which was why he was struggling so much. And even if it does not happen that day, it may occur in the future where certain habits are developed. That pitch is swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Livingston. His second one of the inning. That time on what appeared to be a changeup. DeLome now 0 for his last 12. The longest stretch of time that he had was 0 for 30. DeLome remembers that. DeLome loves the game and, and always has appreciated. He hustles down the line no, no matter what. In the end, it comes down to success at the plate. And right now, he's He's just not been able to really find his rhythm over the last few games. Thing about the start of the Somerset series, the first pitch lines up inside, one ball, no strikes. And one other little piece of important information, think about it this way. The Bluefish had those two days off the pitches roped into left center field, but playable, charging forward is Bubba Bell to make the play for the final out of the inning. Eddie Rogers is 0 for 1 after the F8, but last point the bluefish rhythm may have been thrown off by that and a couple of players have said hey look it came in the middle when we were doing quite well seven and three on the road trip and since then four consecutive losses three to somerset and one last night to sugarland no runs no hits no one left on base end of two bridgeport and sugarland are scoreless you're listening to bluefish baseball on bridgeportbluefish.com we'll be right back why do we love baseball is it the uniforms, the pace of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold a commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Inc. Miller time. It's a rallying cry to the men around you, the ones that have become your brothers. A call to beer is answered with Order me a, Miller Light, I'll be there in 10. a night where your crew gets down to the task at hand that may or may not involve running tables, oh, nice drink. firing up the grill, oh, nice. or getting the band back together. Just a few choice words spoken to the right men, yeah. men who crave a light beer that's never light on taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Great beer, your responsibility. Fill it. Hi everyone out there, this is Matt Pike, and you are listening to Perry Miles on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Gilbert Delavara releases the first pitch, the bunt is shown, and it's called strike anyhow. No balls and one strike to Bubba Bell. Bell leads off followed by Drew Locke and Jason Botts, one, two, and three in the Sugarland in order. No score, two hits for the Fish and one for the Skeeters. The next pitch is grounded over to first, handled by Peterson as he steps on the bag, one away on the three unassisted. So Bubba Bell, the center fielder, now 0 for two as it brings Drew Locke trying to figure out the south field number 15, It was the Drew second Locke. time around in the order that really got to Toby Stoner last night. Jimmy Van Ostrand, Ben Harrison, Octavio Martinez, Iggy Suarez, we're more towards the bottom of the order than anything else. And that does happen at times as the first pitch lines up inside. One ball and no strikes. The hitters will become better as the, as the season progresses because the weather gets warmer and it takes less for the pitchers or less for the batters to get warmed up as the next pitch is on the outside corner. One and one. Delavara takes a deep breath, ready to work quickly. The next offering just off the edge. May have been a tad low as well. Two balls and one strike. Sun beating down on the field. Stadium shadows creeping towards third and also angling towards first. It stops at about the 
imaginary point between first base and second base. 2 1 inside. The count three balls and one strike. The base pass, that is. Lots of fans have made their way out on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, May the 19th, ready for another Bluefish game. The 3 1 well outside ball four as Drew Locke has reached base for the second consecutive at bat. First one was a single, and this one on the walk, it brings up Jason Botts. Right killer, Everyone talks about Jason walks Botts. being a mental factor as opposed to a physical one. That, that the pitcher did not give himself or herself an opportunity to record the out. But we'll see if, if it pays off for Sugar Land with Jason Botts to play from the right side. Delvaro's quick release is grounded over to short. Could be two. Stepping on the bag, one. Onto first, double play. Eddie Rogers, the shortstop, glided over to the second base bag and then delivered a dart to first to nail Jason Bott's 6 3 DP and the inning. No runs, no hits, no one left on base because of the twin killing. At the end of two and a half, Bridgeport and Sugarland have yet to score. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. We'll be right back. Celebrate the game, celebrate the passion. Baseball is different in a lot of ways where the history of the sport means so much. Uh, and, and it's something we should never, you know, never forget. And I think the Hall of Fame has a way of reminding us. Anytime uh, that I've visited, it's just, I'm like a little kid. You people at the Hall of Fame have done a great job of uh, preserving uh, the history of the game. Celebrate the game, celebrate the passion. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Miller Time. Don't check your wrist or follow up with your supervisor because Miller Time has nothing to do with when and everything to do with who. What's up, Tommy? Miller Lite is brewed for the guys you're proud to call your brothers who will always talk you out of getting that faux hawk and never talk nice. during your backswing. And when you've got your brothers and the light beer that tastes like a beer should, Cheers. it's not just a good time, it's Miller Time. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Behind everything you're searching for is something you're actually looking for. When you search with the real Yellow Pages, you get more than a contractor. You get a whole new curb appeal. It's not just getting directions to a dry cleaner with YP.com. It's rescuing an old favorite from the back of the closet. And it's more than finding a locksmith with YP.com on your mobile. It's getting to sleep in your own bed. Whatever it might be, there are more ways to search and more ways to find exactly what you're looking for with the real Yellow Pages, YP.com, and YP.com on your mobile, only from AT&T. Jimmy Rollins talks about the Baseball Hall of Fame. Bluefish Baseball returns with the first pitch, landing high to Angel Flores. One ball and no strikes. Flores, a former catcher for the Lancaster Barnstormers, has been with the Bluefish as the third, or the, even the second catcher. The pitch is chopped over to short, handled by e. Suarez. He throws to first in time. Two teammates of each other as it combines for a six to three put out bring up Kennard Jones Jones is one for one a single in the first inning the Bluefish has have been stymied over the last four games just a total of Let eight runs first true dry spell of the year and much of it had to do Perhaps with the lack of hitting from Colin DeLomas, the first pitch fastball lands outside. One ball and one strikes. He says, he told me today, even though he, he knew that it wasn't just his fault, even though he might put it on his back, the 1-0. Fastball right there in the middle, but low, 2-0. He said that every time that I seem to get a hit, we've only lost twice. That's since he's been here. It's been a record of 10-2 whenever he didn't get a hit, which has been each of... His last three games, the team's 0-3. The pitch is lifted into deep left field, going back and unable to get there. Drew Lockett skies over his head. He flings the ball back in, but not before. Kennard Jones winds up at second base with a one-out double. He is halfway to the cycle now. Still a long way to go for that, although. Jones gets more triples than your average hitter in this league as Pedro Lopez moves forward. Second base number four, Pedro The Bluefish have also only had a brief one to nothing lead 
through the last four games during that losing streak. It happened the finale against Somerset. It was a one nothing lead until the bottom half of the second inning when Nettles clubbed a home run to left field. The first pitch taken all the way by Lopez, 0-1, as it clipped the outside corner. Pedro Lopez and Adam Greenberg have something in common, not something that any baseball player would like to go through, though. The fastball turns outside, one ball, one strike. Both of them got hit in the head. Pedro Lopez got hit in the face, and they had to miss significant amounts of time due to the injury. Lopez, 2007, Greenberg way back as the pitch is rifled on the outside corner. And the cow runs to a ball and I believe two strikes. But Pedro Lopez worked his way back and was unable to get returned to the big league with the Reds. He was in double A AA and triple A for quite a period of time as Lopez fouls it right off of his shin. Count remains at a ball and two strikes. Lopez has had plenty of things going on in his life, and he remembers the time that, that he did get hit in the face. It was very difficult for him because any inside pitch, there was a slight twitch. As a throw to second base is not nearly in time, Mickey Suarez and the catcher, Kay Johnson, putting on a couple of signals to try to keep Kennard Jones back at the bag. Remember, Jones has the ability to steal some bases. Six steals and caught five times. The one, two, runner goes, pitches outside the throw to third, in time! Kennard Jones tried to swipe third. It was an outside offering, and Kennard Jones could not get in there beyond the tag of Van Ostrin. So Jones is done at third on the two to five as Lopez goes into the box. Two men out. Southpaw Livingston peers in for the sign. Gets it set up his outside pitch. Is sliced into right center field but playable for Bubba Bell who makes the catch to the right of center for the final out of the frame. No runs, one base hit, no one left on because of the caught stealing. End of three. Bridgeport and Sugarland still have yet to score. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Perry Miles will be right back. Get out of TC. Find the first case dugout. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pace of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold a commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Inc. Miller time. It's a rallying cry to the men around you, the ones that have become your brothers. A call to beer is answered with... A night where your crew gets down to the task at hand that may or may not involve running tables, firing up the grill, or getting the band back together. Just a few choice words spoken to the right men, men who crave a light beer that's never light on taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi everyone out there, this is Matt Pike, and you are listening to Perry Miles on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Bluefish baseball is back on the air. Bridgeport and Sugarland yet to score. Top of the fourth inning. First pitch winds to the inside and misses the corner. One ball and no strikes. The Bluefish infield playing pretty much straight away, except for 
Ramon Vasquez over at third as the pitch is poked towards second. Pedro Lopez gets on one knee as he fielded to his left and was able to deliver to first in time. Ophelio Castro represents the first out on the four to three. A plethora of fans at the ballpark today. And today's trivia question, what was the largest crowd in the history of Bluefish Baseball? Largest crowd in the history of Bluefish Baseball. Highest attendance. The first pitch is a fastball outside. It missed the corner, one ball and no strikes. Highest attendance for one game all time in Bluefish Baseball. I have to go way back. That much I will say. 15 year anniversary season. Go back to what year one or even year two as the fastball again is outside, two balls and no strikes. And an even easier question for those of you out there, what's the highest attendance for the Bluefish over the last couple of years? Is the next one twisted inside, but it misses again, three balls and no strikes. Josh Presley entering today's game was at 250 with two homers and nine ribbies. Not quite producing the way that he had in Somerset and perhaps his bat is slowing down a little bit. The three O's right down the middle, three and one. The last batter due up in the frame is Jimmy Van Ostrick. He would step up after Presley with one man out in the frame. And Bluefish angling more towards left center as the pitch rotates away for ball four. Presley takes his base with one man out. It brings up Ben Harrison. Now batting third base, number 25, Jimmy Van Ostrick. In for Bridgeport in the history of Bluefish baseball. And you can send me a response to that by going and sending the email to perrym86 at gmail.com. You can also, you can also follow me on Twitter, just me, P. Miles. The first pitch is ripped, swung on and missed. A big cut, 0 and 1 by Van Ostrick. Walk on his resume today. Fans and have both sides of the play, both first the inside, the outside corner, then the inside corner, where the catcher waits. Next pitch is swung on in line, base hit, past the dive of Eddie Rogers. Jimmy Van Ostrin comes up with a single as Josh Presley must stop his progress at second base. Runners at first and second, one man out for Ben Harrison. Last year, Harrison did all kinds of things to the Bluefish pitching staff. And it's part of the reason why Southern Maryland was able to win the season series and proceed to get into the postseason as Terry McGriff jogs out quickly to talk with Gilbert Delavara. It is the first imposition for the left-hander today. He must overcome that obstacle. But last year, Harrison against the Bluefish hit 258, but he had three homers and eight RBI, which is which is pretty solid. Unieski Sanchez wound up going to affiliate baseball. Uh, hit 636 hit against the Bluefish with two homers and 12 ribbies. He did everything well. And the Bluefish, they do not forget about Unieski Sanchez, especially if he were to return to this league. One out toss to Harrison on its way is a steamer high. One ball and no strikes. Runner at second base is Josh Preston. Not much speed there. Jimmy Van Ostren has a little bit more speed as he drifts off the first. The 1-0. Rift down the left field line, but it is a foul ball. It was hooked by Harrison toward the left side and fell foul about five feet. One ball, one strike. A 
Bluefish and Sugarland are scoreless. Delavara steered in for the sign, got it. Pitch, swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes. Harrison beforehand, before his days in, Sh in Southern Maryland, played affiliated baseball. The right hander weighs in and waits for Delavara to unleash the baseball. Brings the glove up to the chest. Go on two. Swung on and missed. Big cut. No dice for Ben Harrison. He went for the sevens on the crap stable. Came up with a different number. And Delavara served him up. Short top number two, Iggy Suarez. Third strike out of the game. For the Bridgeport left-hander, brings up Iggy Suarez, who already has been a strikeout victim of Delavara. Suarez had a long hitting streak to start last year with Somerset. Waggles the bat, set up his inside pitch, rotates to the edge. A beautiful pitch, 0-1. This year, the Bluefish base, the base throwing ability of the Bluefish has not been that great. It has been facilitated by the Bluefish pitchers, but with the base runners on the way that they are, as the next toss is inside. No threat to go from either Presley or Van Ostrom. One ball, one strike. Colin DeLome, still in the sunshine there. Gonna have to shade his eyes a bit. May not be able to see the ball all too well. One out there, the one one. Drifts low and got by Angel Flores. Believe that's going to be a passed ball. That was a ball that probably should have been caught and Flores in a semi-spike motion delivered the baseball to the Bluefish dugout. Two balls and a strike. Like to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Bridgeportbluefish.com, 7.05 on the East Coast, 6.05 first pitch from Bridgeport. This is the first hint of trouble that De La Vara has truly been in. It's the first time that a runner has reached third base tonight. And should be interesting pitches. Another swing and a foul ball. Two balls, two strikes. The runner reached second base in the first inning. That was Drew Locke. But nothing has gotten further than first base after that point. Until now. Bluefish hoping to hold to push the game to the bottom of the fourth scoreless. Will Delavara do it? The 2 2. Down low, blocked by Flores as he skips a couple of steps to his right and looks up in the process to make sure that Van Ostrand is, well, that Presley's not going anywhere. Three balls and two strikes. Vasquez, Rogers, Lopez, all three infielders to the left of Peterson playing very deep on the infield. The three two. Fastball inside ball four. The bases are now loaded for Cade Johnson. Last time Johnson was up, he grounded out four to three. Already two walks in the inning. Five walks allowed in the game for De La Vara. He gave up one in the first, another in the second, tack on another in the third, and two more in this inning. Cade Johnson with an open stance. Set up is toward the middle. The next pitch is swung on and poked to the right side. It is a base hit. The run scores. Gaetti waving the second runner home. The throw to the plate is cut off by Brock Peterson. It appeared that Angel Flores might have had a play had it not been cut off, but it's a two-run single for Cade Johnson, and the Bluefish are now down by a score of two to nothing. Both Presley and Van Ostrin came home. And Iggy Center Suarez stayed, stayed at second base. 
and the Bluefish bullpen, which had pitched very well up until last night. They have to get going again. Bridgeport may need to get more innings out of its starters. The next pitch is grounded to short. Eddie Rogers handles, takes his time, and delivers to first to retire the side. But a two-run single by Cade Johnson. And that ball is sent to right field to give the Skeeters a two-nothing lead heading to the bottom of the four. Let's see the Blue Fish baseball on Bridgeport.com. We'll be right back after these words from our local sponsors. Stay tuned. When you heard about the clubhouse, you really located located in Fairfield as an unparalleled team of baseball and softball instructors offering private instruction, camps, team training, rentals, and best of all, the chance to learn from an all-pro team including Mike Porzio, former MLB pitcher, and the Bluefish's very own Willie Upshaw. Open seven days a week, stop in and meet our team, or call us 203-292-8700 and visit us at the web, theclubhousect.com, and get the major league experience. Baseball legend Henry Aaron reflects on his Hall of Fame legacy. I think that since I played for the public, they need to share what I did in my life as first baseball. It's the proudest moment of my life to give everything to the Hall of Fame. I often tell people they need to get and see it. There is no other building in the world like the Hall of Fame in baseball. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the legacy. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Mike Piazza talks about the Baseball Hall of Fame. It just connects you with the history of the game and uh, the, the tradition of this game and how far, how important this game is to, to the fabric of society. It's something I use to bond with my father and I will always, and I love to, to sort of teach my kids uh, the history of baseball. Preserving history, honoring excellence, connecting generations. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Shark tooth, screwdriver, skeleton key, golf tee from the golf trip that you never went golfing on, grill fork, tuning fork, fork fork, the lucky fishing lure you snagged Alan with, sorry Alan, drumsticks, chopsticks from the place you met that Dallas-based flight attendant, a motel key, let's not talk about the motel key, a spark plug, a domino, a house key. How do these things make Miller Lite from a can even better? Find out May 2012. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Lite wants you to win the three. Bluefish baseball once again comes to you from the bottom of the fourth inning. Nobody out. Prentice Redmond moves forward. He's followed by Luis Lopez and Ramon Vasquez. The first pitch is a fastball. Low one ball and no strikes. Redmond one for one with an infield single coming in the first inning, but Bluefish did not score against Livingston. The next pitch dances low. And away, two balls and no strikes. Bridgeport hoping to avoid a five-game losing streak. The 2-0. Fastball right down the middle, 2-1. and one. Prentice Redmond, former Fresno Grizzly, AAA affiliate of the San Francisco Giants. And played quite well there before he was pinched as the pitch is grounded over to short handled by Iggy Suarez. He throws to first in time, one away. He was suspended for MLB's substance policy. And he was suspended for, I believe it was 100 games. He's tested positive twice. And now he's in this league, even though he has done quite well as Luis Lopez moves forward. And now five on the score sheet for Lopez. As the designated hitter takes a pitch on the outside corner, 0-1. Not too many things to worry about for Lopez today other than hitting the baseball. Typically he's at third. Sometimes he'll play first as well as the 0-1 is low. One ball, one strike. With the addition of Willie Ibar, his days at first base may be limited. Although he does find himself in the everyday lineup because of his run production. 13 RBI in the early going. The pitch settles low. Two balls and one strike. 
And even though Lopez has had his ups and his downs early on, he always winds up about 280, 285 once the season is over. The next offering is low, three balls and one strike. Ramon Vasquez is in the on-deck circle. He'll get an opportunity this inning. The 3-1 is low ball four. Luis Lopez works a walk against Livingston. He is on first base to spring Ramon Vasquez. He goes into his workspace. Left-handed hitters, batter's box. Bottom of the fourth. Two to nothing Skeeters, courtesy of a two-run single to right field by Kay Johnson. After the bases were loaded. Sugar Land scored nine runs in the fifth yesterday, not nearly as many today. On this one, as the pitch is ripped into right field, it drops in for a base hit. Looked to be a little bit more of a line drive at first when he made contact with the baseball. But Vasquez gets on base, set up Brock Peterson. Runners at first and second for Peterson, who had two RBI yesterday on a single in ninth inning. Bridgeport just was getting stymied all over the place over the last four games. Six hits or fewer in three of the last four as Peterson swings and misses. 0-1 oh would appear to be a high changeup. When the Bluefish were rolling, their offense was the catalyst. And during their woes, they have not been able to score. The pitches up through for a base hit, I believe. It looked to be making a secondary hop and just died on the grass. Van Ostrin fooled by the direction that the ball took and my assumption would be that it would be credited as a base hit. There was no way. Ostrin anticipated the hop coming to him up and it stayed down. Center field number eight, Calvin Below. And I believe it was ruled a base hit because the fifth one was put on the board. A base hit to left field to set. The base is loaded for DeLone. Can the center fielder break out of his hitting woes? The first pitch is low and away. One ball and no strike. No hitter would like to consider when he's going through a slump because if you hit the ball hard and it goes in the wrong spot, it still is recorded as an out. But DeLome did strike out five times in the Somerset series. The one out pitch is stroke. Left center field, base hit. One run scores. Lopez telling the runner behind him to score. Vasquez comes to the plate and moving around is the next runner of the throw is not in time. Brock Peterson comes to the plate. DeLome moves to third. It, I believe, is an RBI double, and I believe it is also an error on the throw or an advancement on the throw. The Bluefish have their first lead of the series. It is three to two on the line drive by DeLone. No error placed on the board to this point. It is without a doubt a base hit for DeLone. The question is whether it is a single and double. The hit is placed on the scoreboard, but I do not believe that there is an error there. And the runner advances to third on the throw. It is a double. DeLone moves to third on the throw. And it springs Eddie Rogers to the plate with Sugarland creeping in toward the left of the infield grass. The Bluefish desperately needed that hit. From DeLone, first pitch from Rogers is a bouncer just foul. Now at 0 and 1. For Colin DeLone, the first RBI that he's had since the Camden series. Let's not also forget 17 RBI, or rather 16 as there is no throw, the hit oh, still on the board. 17 RBI 
on the year for DeLome as the runner came all the way around. Peterson came all the way around from first base. The next pitch lunged at by Rogers. Count runs, I believe, to one ball and two strikes. The shortstop has played a stout defense. And he's hoping to provide more offense. The pitch is lined right to third, handled by Van Ostrand. A good swing put together by Rogers. But he hit in the wrong, wrong area. After the L5, it brings up Angel Flores. So we're going to double check on the official scoring on that Angel one. Flores. But I believe it is ruled as a double and three RBI for DeLome with DeLome advancing on the throw home towards third base. Southpaw uncorks and it is low to Flores. One ball and no strikes. one -oh, fastball upstairs. Two balls and no strikes. The Sugarland Skeeters we're aiming more towards right center field against DeLome. And their gamble did not pay off. Their estimation did not pay off as the next pitch swerves to the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Flores grounded out the short in his first at bat. Even stance, waggles the bat, set up outside, pitch well away from the corner. Three balls and a strike, and the one player you do not w usually want to walk is the ninth hitter in the order because Kennard Jones coming up, he's pretty solid. Two for two today. Three one, whiffed. Big cut, three balls, two strikes. And let's not forget, if he does get on base, it could lead to a big, uh, an even bigger inning in the three two. Check swing. There is a challenge by Kay Johnson, but nothing doing as Ronnie Whiting did not challenge the home plate umpire towards Mark Facto. It is a walk that Livingston allows to bring up Kennard Jones. Jones last year had a number of home runs to start the season. This year he has not gotten off to as quick of a start. Early on a distinct advantage for many of the teams in the division that are playing against the Bluefish. As Southern Maryland's losing to Camden right now, Long Island is the early lead. It but it counts as three RBI for DeLome officially no, with Lopez, Vasquez, and I'm Peterson scoring. Sounds right to me. Nothing little bothers you, does it? No, not really. I like Kennard everything. Jones, single and double. Lefty lefty situation and a huge one in the contest. The Bluefish scoring three runs for the first time since the Camden series. The pitch is inside. One ball and no strikes. And it's been all about the offensive productivity. Scoring eight runs a game or more when the Bridgeport squad wins as the pitch is inside. Two balls, no strikes. And slightly less than two per night when the team loses. It's that much of a disparity. The 2-0. Fastball over the middle, two and one. For those of you who would like to tune into the Bluefish broadcast more often or follow, just go to bridgeportbluefish.com. Runs at the corners, two one. Offering is outside, three balls and a strike. If Kennard Jones reaches Pedro Lopez, who's 0 for 2 tonight, would step up. But that is not exactly the guy that you want coming to the play at this point if you're Sugarland because of his ability to walk. And if he walks, gets on base, that would be huge for the Bluefish. The pitch is stroked in the left field. It dunks in for a base hit. 
RBI single by Kennard Jones. To left field, the Bluefish increase the lead. It's four to two. The runners move up another base with Angel Flores stationed at second. Pedro Lopez. Pedro Lopez moves forward. He has not joined the hit parade just yet for the fish. Already the Bluefish with six hits tonight. Or rather make it seven pitches low, one ball, no strikes. That was the seventh base hit of the night, the Kennard Jones strike to left field. And Pedro Lopez could make Livingston's day even more of a problem. The 1-0, swung on and pokes past Presley into right field for another base hit. Rounding third coming to the plate and able to get there standing up is Angel Flores. The Bluefish have scored five runs in the fourth inning following the two spot put up by Sugarland. It is now a five to two Bridgeport lead. Kennard Jones rotates over to second base while Pedro Lopez picks up the RBI. Prentice Redmond represents the 10th batter to step up to the plate in this inning. Kay Johnson giving a couple of signals to the rest of the infielders, but none of them working at this point as bullpen action starts for the Skeeters. Lefty righty situation, the setup over toward the middle, pitch is ripped foul. And it gets trapped on top of the tarp. It fell on top of the tarp because it was squeezed between the little area that's between the tarp and the wall. Oh, and one, one of the Skeeters players trying to stretch to get the baseball, but then has to go back to protect the pitcher who's warming up in the bullpen. A one on its way, lefty against righty matchup. Livingston against Redmond, the 0-1. Whiffed. The count, no balls and two strikes. A curveball that dove down. Yesterday, Toby Stoner was able to go through four innings before he got roughed up a bit. And today, Livingston goes three and two thirds before he gets roughed up. The 0-2 in there for a called strike three. Redmond strikes out. He went 0 for two in the inning, but the Bluefish Again, score five times. Five runs on five base hits. A couple of runners left on. At the end of four, Bridgeport owns a five to two lead. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. We'll be right back. Succulent for mignon, scrumptious salmon florentine, savory twin grilled pork chops. Getting hungry? Your table awaits at the Park City Grill, Fairfield County's elegant new dining spot in the beautifully renovated Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Comfortable, warm, and inviting. Park City Grill offers a world-class dining experience at reasonable prices. Come to the Park City Grill, 1070 Main Street in the Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Take I-95, exit 27A to exit 2. Plenty of free, secure parking. At Miller Lite, we believe if you're not choosing a light beer with more taste, you need to man up, not man down. Because up is way better than down. You don't tell someone sad to cheer down. What's down, dog? A steamy pile and you just stepped in it. Your girlfriend's not wearing a push-down bra? It's called gravity, Isaac Nitwit. Can I be down front with you? All this down talk is bringing me down. So don't man down, man up, and choose a light beer with more taste. Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. I call this little ditty America's Pastime. Woo! Summer's here and it feels pretty nice. Baseball and hot dogs and refreshment on ice. Some games are early, some are at night. But there's always a beer man with ice cold Coors Light. He's the most reliable player in the game. All it takes is calling his name, so even if your team doesn't hit any dingers, You'll have frost brewed refreshment. Brew your finger. Thank you. Frost brewed course life will refresh your beer. We're brewing company going Colorado. Great beer from Sunday Spot 
Bluefish Baseball returns here with Gilbert DeLavara unleashing a heater high, one ball and no strikes. The Bluefish finally erupted with their offense in the fourth inning by scoring five times against Sugarland's Bobby Livingston. The next pitch is swung on and served into shallow left of center field where Colin DeLone grabs the baseball, one away in the frame. Almost a perfect night at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Sun-filled skies as the sunshine fades behind the stadium. Wind not much of an issue, but it's about right, 70 degrees at the ballpark. Perfect baseball conditions as Jason Bott steps forward after the F8 by Drew Locke. Bott's today has ground into a double play and flied out to right. The first pitch slides to the outside corner, 0-1. Bott's last time in affiliated baseball was with Syracuse in the AAA. Philly of the Washington Nationals. Syracuse has had plenty of players go through their organization, including the 19-year-old phenom Bryce Harper as Bott swings through. No balls and two strikes. Harper getting booed almost everywhere that he goes. And even one particular player, Cole Hamels, saying that he intentionally hit Bryce Harper with a pitch. As a result of that, he was suspended for five games. And he missed one start because of it. The idea is not to admit to that, and baseball players tend to keep it to themselves. Pitches ground toward the middle. Shortstop Eddie Rogers fields and flips on the move. His, his feet got entangled. His feet went one way and the rest of his body went another as he lobbed it over the top. It was going to be a difficult play anyhow because his momentum was carrying him towards right field. And Jason Botts is safe. It, it probably is going to be ruled as an infield single. As a matter of fact, it already has been ruled as an infield single. You cannot control the cleats. If the cleats get stuck and you cannot move and you fall down, it's different than if you bobble the ball or if you throw it into the dirt. Different circumstances. The one out, toss is sliced down the right field line. Brock Peterson angling towards the stands, but he cannot get there. It is five rows back to the right of the Bluefish dugout. No balls and one strike. Plenty of action today in Major League Sports. Plenty of action tonight in the Atlantic League. And it's it's always happening during the summertime, except for that one particular day. Day after the All-Star game, Major League Baseball, usually. The 0-1, De La Vara paints the end, outside corner. No balls and two strikes. Beautiful Saturday evening it has turned out to be. Runner at first base, Jason Botts takes him modestly, not too deep, the 0-2. Just out off the corner, one and two. Ophelio Castro, 0 for one, he grounded out to second base and also has walked. Castro is a, is a pesky hitter and a solid one, which is why he's Cleaning up today after what he did yesterday. Th three base hits, a couple of singles on a double as he strokes the next one foul to the right. He reminds me a lot of the way that Ramon Castro hits with his sole purpose of clubbing the ball, it seems, towards right field, which is why Redmond is shallow a little bit towards right side, but DeLome is, at, is shifting more towards left center. Small sample size for this guy. The pitch is ripped into left. It is a base hit. Runners at first and second for the Skeeters to set up Josh Presley at the plate, and he is a home run threat for Sugarland. Jason Botts moves to second, and the tying run comes to the plate. Is Gilbert DeLavara able to withstand the pressure provided by the Skeeters? 
It is a very loose team, spearheaded by Mr. Gaetti. And he feels that the hitters and the defensive players should play that way, should play loose, feel free and comfortable, and play to the to the hardest possible degree that they can. Intensity and integrity. The one out toss, swung on and ground to short, could be two, flip the second one, onto first, double play. Rogers to Pedro Lopez to Brock Peterson to end any threat. 6 4 3 ends the fifth. End of four and a half. Bridgeport leads five to two. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Perry Miles will be returned right after this. That's right. We are up here behind the press box. I have Nick from New Milford. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Baseball is different in a lot of ways where the history of the sport means so much. Uh, and, and it's something we should never, you know, never forget. And I think the Hall of Fame has a way of reminding us. Any time uh, that I've visited, it's just, I'm like a little kid. You people at the Hall of Fame have done a great job of uh, preserving uh, the history of the game. Celebrate the game, celebrate the passion. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. I am here with Joey Jasseride of Bridgeport Bluefish. Joey. Miller Lite wants you to win the greatest weekend that never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Miller Lite taste points for your chance to win one of a hundred Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Lite and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happened. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Sweepstakes begin 5 one 12 and ends 8 one 12 For details, how to enter, and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pace of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. Fish baseball returns with a first pitch outside to Luis Lopez. One ball and no strikes. Lopez 0-4-1 today. He walked and scored a run. He also lined out to third base as Livingston delivers what appeared to be a changeup over the outside corner. One ball, one strike. There may have been a confusion of signals provided as there is some action brewing in the Sugarland bullpen. Sugarland trailing in this contest by a score of 5 to 2. Plenty of other games taking place tonight. It is a southpaw warming up in the bullpen for the Skeeters, and it appears to be Trey Rackle. The next pitch is racked foul down the left field line out of play. One ball and two strikes. Actually, Trey Rackle's a right handed pitcher, so it's not him. I thought it was number 12 down the left field line. There's Derek Gordon, but he's a starter. Bobby Livingston is a starter. Heath Phillips may come out as the pitch is swung on and missed for strike three as Luis Lopez goes down. Unless it's someone that we do not know already. Do not know who that is. It looked like number 12 or 13 on the back of the jersey. It is a right-handed pitcher, Trey Rackle, down the left field line. Third base, number three. So Lopez goes yeah. down and sets up Ramon Vasquez. Third baseman is one for two, a single and a run scored. He's also flying out to left field. The next pitch over the middle. No balls in one strike. Eight hits to five. Bridgeport has more than Sugarland today. Not had a 10 hit game in quite some time. The 0 1, but shown pulled back as the changeup glided low, one ball and one strike. And one would imagine that Rackle might 
go a few innings if Livingston is unable to go any further as there's action brewing down the right field line as well as the bunt is shown and then tap foul to the left. One ball, two strikes. Is that it for Gilbert De Lavara? Jonah Bayless is in the bullpen for the Bluefish. The one, two. Outside, two balls and two strikes. Bayless can pitch two or three innings at a time. And the thought process is maybe have Bayless pitch three and Rami Lewis go one. Or have two and two from each of them to try to finish off the game. The two, two is a line on a couple of hops towards second. Shifting to his left and throwing is Ophelio Castro on the move two away on the four to three. Gilbert De Lavara is in line for the victory if the Bluefish are able to hold on to this lead. Of course, if it's a tie game, the decision would not be his. With Bayless continuing to warm up. Bayless has been the best Bluefish pitcher this season, even though he was not the one that was picked up earlier this year. That belonged to Dan Stanch. Orings run one run baseball now at the San Antonio Missions after struggling in Reno with AAA. The two out tosses a curveball or a changeup over the outside corner on one. Many players from the Bluefish made their way out to Reno. Angel Barroa had quite a bit of success as the 0 1 is reached for and poked foul. 0 and 2. And we think about it in another light. Angel Baroa succeeded. You look at Camden with Drew Macias. He went to the San Diego organization in Reno as well as the 0-2 darts inside. One ball and two strikes. The Pacific Coast League, especially Reno, Sacramento, Colorado Springs, have reputations to be band boxes for hitters as the pitch is swung on and missed on what appeared to be a high fastball. Peterson strikes out. Two strikeouts in the inning, impressive comeback for Livingston, but he does have the big hiccup in the fourth inning for his resume. Five runs for the Bluefish and two runs for the Skeeters heading to the top of the sixth. You're listening to the Bluefish Broadcast Network. We'll be right back after these words from our local sponsors. So you stay tuned, my friends. fans have you heard about the clubhouse conveniently located in Fairfield it has an unparalleled team of baseball and softball instructors offering private instruction camps team training rentals and best of all the chance to learn from an all pro team including Mike Porzio former MLB pitcher and the Bluefish's very own Willie Upshaw open seven days a week stop in and meet our team or call us 203-292-8700 and visit us at the web theclubhousect.com and get the major league experience Baseball legend Henry Aaron reflects on his Hall of Fame legacy. I think that since I played for the public, they need to share what I did in my life with play baseball. It's the proudest moment of my life to give everything to the Hall of Fame. I often tell people they need to give and see it. There is no other building in the world like the Hall of Fame in baseball. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the legacy. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. We welcome you back to Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Perry Miles here. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuity. Prudential Annuity is going to bat for our community. It is Jonah Bayless who digs in. Almost like a dog when they're trying to remove the dirt. He just kicked around the dirt with his cleats to try to feel for the surface at the ballpark at Harbor Yard as he will be working to some of Sugarland's bottom of the order hitters. Jimmy Van Ostren, Ben Harrison, Iggy Suarez, six, now seven, and eight in, in the order for the Skeeters. The final line for De La Vara, five innings pitched, five hits, 
two runs, both earned, five walks and three strikeouts, 80 pitches for De La Vara. He can win the game and he cannot lose it at this point as Van Oostrand digs in a walk and a single on his resume with a run score. Jonah deals and Bayless paints the inside corner 0-1. At this point, I would like to congratulate my brother for graduating and receiving his PhD from Boston University. The 0-1 swung on and fouled back. No balls, two strikes. Plenty of the baseball players are trying to complete college. One of them just recently graduated from Nickel State, Bubba Bell. So he got his degree from there. And my brother just so happened to go through a PhD program and certainly hope for nothing but success for his future as he gets honored in Boston. The graduation ceremony is tonight. Wish I could be there, bro. No balls and two strikes. Righty, righty matchup, and the next pitch dives outside, one ball and two strikes. Top of the sixth inning, five to two the score. Eight hits, two five, Bluefish and Blue Crabs. I was actually there for his presentation that allowed him to get the PhD. And I'm sure many of the family members of Bubba Bell did the same when he was planning on graduating. The one, two, swung on and lifted down the left field line, but it angles foul toward the corner ball and two strikes to Jimmy Van Ostrom. A walk in the second, a single in the fourth. Van Ostrand saw a change up last night that he was able to just keep his bat out there long enough to be able to drive it over the wall in left field. And he felt fortunate to be able to get that home run. But he loved hockey, loved baseball. He opted to go the baseball route and competed for the Olympics as the pitch is swung on and missed for strike three. Competed for the Olympics, but did not win a gold medal. Competed for the national team in Canada as Old Van Ostrin goes down and swings Ben Harrison. It's not to say that the American team or the Dominican Republic team is better than, let's say, the Canadian team as the next pitch is diving over the middle of the plate 0-1. But there are plenty more Americans playing Major League Baseball than there are Canadians or players from the Dominican Republic or Panama playing Major League Baseball. So teams from the Olympic Games or from the World Baseball Classic stack their teams with MLB players. Next pitch is swung on and missed. No balls and two strikes. And guys like Curtis Granderson may be left out of the fold because there are so many great athletes in Big League Baseball that could compete on that level. Some players also want their rest. The 0-2, fastball away, one ball, two strikes. And think about it this way, too. Baseball would have to take place during the Summer Olympics. Do not think anybody's going to be going to the Winter Olympics when it's snowing and 20 degrees outside. Just have a bad feeling that that would not be a good idea for the Olympic Games, to have baseball that way. The 1-2. Swung on and lifted high in the air to deep left field. Kennard Jones sprinting back. He's leaning towards the track, then veers in to make the play for out number two. And and the other part is the Olympic Games, believe it or not, for baseball, no, no longer in existence, I believe. I believe it was banned a couple of years ago. Could not get big league ball players to come out. So Cuba and Japan, whose teams almost as a requirement have to go to the Olympic Games. Those two teams wound up winning most of the gold medals because the only players that would be competing in the Olympic Games were either minor league players looking to get their name out by facing some big time pitchers from other countries as the pitch is grounded to short. Eddie Rogers fires off his back leg and delivers in time for the final out of the inning or they get college players because their seasons end in May or June, so they'll have the time to go overseas or to stay in this country to compete at that level. 
at the end of five and a half after a one, two, three. It's five to two, Bluefish on top. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. Savory Twin Grill Pork Chops. Getting hungry? Your table awaits at the Park City Grill, Fairfield County's elegant new dining spot in the beautifully renovated Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Comfortable, warm, and inviting. Park City Grill offers a world-class dining experience at reasonable prices. Come to the Park City Grill, 1070 Main Street in the Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Take I-95 exit 27A to exit 2. Plenty of free, secure parking. At Miller Lite, we believe if you're not choosing a light beer with more taste, you need to man up, not man down. Because up is way better than down. You don't tell someone sad to cheer down. What's down, dog? A steamy pile and you just stepped in it. Your girlfriend's not wearing a push-down bra? It's called gravity, Isaac Nitwit. Can I be down front with you? All this down talk is bringing down. So don't man down, man up, and choose a light beer with more taste. Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. I call this little ditty America's Pastime. <gasps> Summer's here and it feels pretty nice. Baseball and hot dogs and refreshment on ice. Some games are early, some are at night. But there's always a beer man with ice cold Coors Light. He's the most reliable player in the game. All it takes is calling his name, so even if your team doesn't hit any dingers, You'll have Frost Brewed Refreshment at the tip of your fingers. Thank you. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer from Vegas, Bob Phillips. I called this one. We were discussing about how baseball was out at the Olympic Games. They dropped baseball and softball, NBC did, but it could be back for 2016. The IOC determined that as well as the NBC networks would carry the games. But needless to say, the Olympic Games are out, and part of the reason is because many of the competitive ball players, many of the individuals who were competing, had big time contracts that they had to abide by. Many of the star players, think about it this way, Derek Jeter going over, he has a, a big time contract to live. Alex Rodriguez for the Yankees, let's not forget about the other guys. That might make it over. You talk about the Tigers, Maglio Ordonez or, or Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers. You go to the National League and the Dodgers, Matt Kent might be one of them or Ryan Braun might be another. Those players would be unable to compete during this format unless Major League Baseball were to fit a period of time for where the baseball players could compete for their country and allow the hiatus to take place as the first pitch is on its way. Bunt attempt up the third base side, but it dribbles foul. No balls in one strike. Colin DeLone before the game said he might try to bunt. He has great speed, and that's why he's not been in a slump. He does it after a bases clearing double to left center. Go figure. Now that is some mental strategy being used efficiently. After what DeLone did, to apply the bunt, now he has Van Ostrand's attention at third as he's inside the lip of the infield grass, the 0-1, fastball high. One ball and one strike. Van Ostrand backs up maybe a step, but he's familiar with the way DeLome is. The two of them were friends back when DeLome was with Round Rock as the pitch is rotated outside, two balls, one strike. Van Ostrand, Round Rock, triple, double, or rather double A with the hooks and triple A for lock as the pitch is inside. Three balls and a strike. DeLone one for two, a double, had scored three runs. He's also scored a run, courtesy of an RBI single left for Canard Jones. Pedro Lopez is the other RBI on the night. The three one, whiffed. DeLone swings over the top. Three balls and two strikes. Bottom half of the sixth inning, five to two the score. And Gilbert DeLavara on his way to a possible victory as DeLome strokes it to right center field. It is a base hit as it drops just in front of the sprinting Bubba Bell. His second base hit in as many at-bats and it sets up Eddie Rogers. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. It is Rackle on the hill for Sugarland. 
Trey Rackle, eight and a third innings, four earned runs to this point of the season. And opponents are hitting 207 against him, which means he's been quite effective other than perhaps the home run ball. The first pitch is low, one ball, no strikes. When guys hit 207 against you, chances are it's one or a couple of big hits. And he's given up four extra base hits in those eight and a third innings, which is not that good. Willie Upshaw made a point the other day, as the throw to first is not in time. He made a point the other day about giving up 44 extra base hits within a period of time. And 44 extra base hits in the first 20 games or so as the pitch is outside and low, the throw to second not nearly in time as DeLome steals second base. May not seem like a lot, but those extra base hits propel teams to victory. The double could bring in two runs, a home run could bring in another couple. And after the way the Bluefish had started the season by giving up either zero or one extra base hits, their number just blossomed, ballooned. And Willie was not too thrilled about that. So he got us a decent start out of De La Vara, five innings, two runs. And now he has the bullpen, which he's been able to rely on most of the season, especially Jonah Bayless. 2-0 from Rackle. Serves high in the air to deep center, but playable. Handled by Bubba Bell as he makes the catch. Tagging and sprinting the third DeLome on a couple hops. It's handled by Van Ostrin, but not before DeLome slides in safely. It has the same impact that a ground ball to the right side would have that the runner moved to third. The difference is DeLome tags up. And what does tag up mean? Catcher number 39. The runner retreats to the brother. original bag that the runner started at, waits for the ball to be caught, and then darts from that original bag to the next base. And it's the same way with a sacrifice fly as the pitch is right on the outside corner on one. The runner would go back from third base on a fly ball or even a line drive to try to score the run. And if they are unable to get home, it would not be a sacrifice fly. It would be some sort of a double play as the pitch is sent foul. No balls, two strikes. Many baseball fans understand the concept of the sacrifice fly. And also of the idea of tagging up. They use it for high schools, colleges, pro. They use it almost everywhere. The 0-2. Stroke, center field, base head. Nice piece of hitting for Angel Flores. He picks up an RBI. The Bluefish extend this lead. It is 6-2. RBI rip to center field for Flores. And it sends Gennard Jones to the dish. 10 hits already for the fish. Left Just five for the Skeeters. The fans enjoying themselves at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Runner at first base. As Van Ostrin leans in, knows that Jones has a tendency to bunt. He did not show it there as Jones takes it on the inside corner on a heater, 0-1. 341 on the year. As the right-hander stares in, Rackle puts the glove to the chest, stalls, delivers, pitch swung on and fouled off to the netting, 0-2. Many pitchers have a routine or a superstition that they would like to follow. The routine is, is practical. The superstition is just everything that they that they went by based on the success that it, the person had as a throw to first nine time. He tends to bring the ball to the glove after he pins it behind his back and then stalls about halfway. Not too many pitchers do that. Some of them drop it down as the next pitch also dropped down, one and two. Most of them will drop their glove down to make sure that they're loose or sometimes keep it all the way up to try to hide the ball as long as they can from the body. 
a little bit different from Rackle. Ball and two strikes. Slide step approach and the pitch is spoiled. One ball, two strikes. Almost eight o'clock on the East Coast. Ballpark at Harbor Yard, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Bubba Bell out in left center field. Throw to first, not in time. Towards left center field, Bubba Bell. As he anticipates, Kennard Jones will hit it in that direction. One, two, way inside, two and two. For a righty lefty matchup, though, that may be the wrong play. Lefty lefty perhaps induced Kennard Jones more to look in that direction. Rackle does not have overpowering stuff based on the way that he's been throwing. Slide steps, pitch, swung on and missed. Kennard Jones tried to pull that offering. Two balls, two strikes. Jones, three hits today. Set of his outside pitch. Another swing and a miss. This time it gets Jones on strikes. Two way. Pedro Lopez moves forward. And that pitch was a, what appeared to be a two seam fastball. Sinking down in the zone and just below Jones' bat. He goes back to the batter's box, or rather to the dugout. As Lopez is one for three today. First pitch to the second baseman drifts outside. One ball, no strikes. Take a look quickly at the scoreboard from around the Atlantic League. It's been quite a day so far in ALPB baseball. Bring that courtesy of pointstreak.com and AtlanticLeague.com. The next pitch. Is a fastball outside, two balls, no strike. Sugarland has to play long series at home. Either four game series or six game series. One of them may even be a seven game trip during this, the season. Long stretches of home games against the same opponent as the 2-0 dives over the middle, two balls and one strike. Gary Gaietti made the comment saying it's the same thing as the Road Warriors. Well, not necessarily true, the Road Warriors had to play 63 games on the road, another 63 on the road. They never had a home. 2-1, swung on and fouled off to the right. Two balls and two strikes. And what's even more interesting is, instead of the uh, 126 road games, 70 road games, 70 home games, jet lag not an issue for the team. Many of them are accustomed to playing big league baseball, triple A baseball traveling through time zones it's not too bad one hour time difference between houston and bridgeport 2-2 two -two is bounced on the ground towards third but veers foul as the count remains even at two and two although the travel out west may have an issue had an opportunity to discuss this with daryl henry the york revolution broadcaster and he said that it does affect you because you are unable to really sleep on the on the plane. It's not that long of a trip. It's about a two hour trip to Houston, same amount to Dallas. Two, two, swung on and missed, strike right? three. And Pedro Lopez goes down swinging. Two straight strikeouts for Rackle to end the, the threat, but not before the Bluefish score. Another run on two base hits, end of six. Bridgeport holds a 6-2 to two lead. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. We'll be right back after this. Thank you very much. I'm out here in short left field with Jasmine from Bridgeport for our Buffalo Wild Wings chicken toss. Jasmine's out here with a giant net. The gear shop at the ballpark at Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything Bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your Bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to fear the fin rally towels, 
team photos, and commemorative baseballs. The gear shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuffed BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark at Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at bridgeportbluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop. Perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Hey kids, it's not too late to join BB and all of his friends by becoming a member of the Bluefish Snappers Club. The Snappers Club is the newest club for all of the biggest or littlest Bluefish fans. As a member of the Snappers Club, you'll not only get free entrance on Snappers Club Day, but you'll also get a membership card to show all of your friends, plus a special t-shirt that will tell everyone you're a member of the club. After each Sunday home game, Baseball Bunch members will also be invited onto the field to run the bases, just like the Bluefish do. You'll even receive a newsletter that will fill you in on all of your favorite Bluefish players, along with all the news that DB Snappers Club has to offer. To join the coolest club around, call 203-345-4800 or go to bridgeportbluefish.com slash kids slash snappers to become a member of BB's Snappers Club. Hello, my name is Joe Bateman. You're listening to Perry Miles on bridgeportbluefish.com. We welcome you back to the Bluefish broadcast. Perry Miles here, top of the seventh inning. It is update time from the Atlantic League as the right-hander Joe Bate, or rather Jonah Bayless moves in and the first pitch is right on the inside corner. Oh, and what we do apologize. It is not Joe Bateman, it is Jonah Bayless. He did pitch last inning. It was a one, two, three frame where he struck out one hitter and it sets up an 0-1 offering to Kay Johnson who counts for the only runs tonight for Sugarland. The next pitch is grounded softly too short. Eddie Rogers on the move, the jump throw is not in time. His momentum carried him towards the left field line. And because of the momentum, Rock Peterson had to slightly go off the first base bag. And Kay Johnson beats it out. Infield single to short. Sets up a runner at first base for Bubba Bell. Take a look at the scoreboard update. Bubba Bell. Not good news for the Bluefish in the sense that the Long Island Ducks are beating the Patriots by a score of five to three in the bottom of the third. The Camden River Sharks smacking the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs 8-0 in the bottom of the fourth from Regency. And down in the valley, as the pitch is low, one ball, no strikes, the lower Susquehanna Valley, that is. Game tied at one between York and Lancaster from Clipper. That's in the bottom of the fourth. Those are your scores in the Atlantic League. And we'll be sure to provide you a Major League update. During the bottom half of the frame, the 1-0 is chopped into the ground towards first. Peterson snags on the slide. He delivers the first, and Bale has just beat the base runner, Bubba Bell, as he toe-tapped and then used his right leg to push back on the base just before Bell got there. An outstanding play on both sides. Peterson, the Let backhanded the grab, followed by Bayless's moving to first base runner moves to scoring position k johnson after the three to one and drew lock moves forward six runs ten hits the two runs and six base hits bridgeport up by four right-hander deals fastball away one ball no strikes light fixtures on Wind has died down considerably from before. It's the American flag pole in left field, holding up the American flag. The indicator still has a statue. 1-0. Heater right down the middle. One ball and one strike. Bridgeport has one more game in this series. Four more on the homestand after tonight. Play against Sugarland again tomorrow. 2:05 first pitch. 1:45 pregame show. 
And for those of you who can make it to the ballpark, it is photo giveaway courtesy of Wade's Dairy. Bluefish photo for the season as the 1-1 drifts away, two balls and a strike. There's also the post Mother's Day celebration presented by Hanson Flowers because Mother's Day was last weekend. Bluefish were away for that, and Camden is the pitch's nub towards short. Charging forward, Eddie Rogers, the delivery to first is in plenty of time as Peterson received the package, two away on the six to three. Jason Botts represents perhaps the last batter in the inning for Jonah Bayless. There's nobody warming up down the right field line. Right fielder number 39. Such an efficient pitcher. Throw strikes, gets ahead in the count. Native of Western Massachusetts and attended Trinity College, which is a premier baseball program in Division III college athletics. Won the national championship back in 2008. Not the right-hander on the mound, but Trinity College won the national championship. The pitch is right in there for a strike, 0-1. And Trinity College has become pretty big around, around the state of Connecticut, but so is UConn baseball, with several players getting drafted, MLB draft. The 0-1 on its way from the righty. Pitch swerves outside, one ball, one strike. You take a look at the way that UConn has improved its baseball program over the years, and that represented by one of the Somerset Patriots pitchers this past weekend. I believe it was, I don't believe it was Arguello. One other, can I remember? The one once, slapped that foul down the left field line, a ball and two strikes. The emergence of UConn as, as a baseball power, St. John's over the last couple of years in college baseball. Sacred Heart and Fairfield U, they play at this venue. And Jason Monty, one of the pitchers for the Ducks, also played on this ballpark, not just as a pro, but also as a college pitcher for Sacred Heart. One, two from Bayless. Way inside, blocked by Flores, two and two. So far, 22 pitches for Bayless, 16 strikes. What more could Willie Upshaw ask from his right-hander, really? Just throw up another scoreless inning. Throws between 91 and 93 miles per hour at this point in his career. He's looking to get back to affiliate baseball, perhaps in the big leagues again, after spending stints with Kansas City and Pittsburgh. 2-2. Two -two. Just off the outside corner. That was a beautiful changeup, and it just did not get Botts to swing, nor did it get him rung up by home plate umpire, Mr. Whiting. Three balls and two strikes. Bayless stares in and waits. Glove tucked down toward the belt, the three-two. Strokes foul to the left. Angled off the netting, ricochets back to the field of play. Three and two. And in professional baseball, Justin Verlander, talk about excellence. He came within one blue pit on a what seemed to be a humpback line drive from getting his third no hitter of his career. 3-2. Swung on a broken bat. Line drive towards center, but handled by Colin DeLome. It was hit a little bit harder than originally expected as Botts flies out to preserve another scoreless inning for Jonah Bayless and the Fish. End of six and a half. One base hit in the frame. It is six to two. Bluefish on top of the Skeeters. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. We'll be right back.
summer's here and it feels pretty nice. Baseball and hot dogs and refreshment on ice. Some games are early, some are at night. But there's always a beer man with ice cold Coors Light. He's the most reliable player in the game. All it takes is calling his name. So even if your team doesn't hit any dingers, you'll have frost brewed refreshment at the tips of your fingers. Thank you. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. I call this one best girlfriend ever. It had been a long day and an even longer week. So I headed toward the kitchen, refreshment I did seek. But after swinging open the fridge, I saw the most horrific sight. Not a single cold beverage, not a single Coors Light. I grabbed my keys, it was time to hit the store. But stopped when I heard a knock at the door. It was my girlfriend, bearing gifts of Coors Light. Best girlfriend ever? You got that right. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. A poem entitled Coors Light Summer. It's a Coors Light Summer, hot babes all around. Backyard barbecues are where you'll be found. It gets pretty hot out, but it'll be all right because coolers are filled with ice cold Coors Light. You step outside, many skirts galore. Be your garden for the ball game, that's what's in store. It's gonna be a scorcher, but there's hope in sight. Refreshment awaits, frost brewed Coors Light. Thank you. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. At Miller Lite, we know there's only one thing baseball fans love as much as great Pilsner taste, and that's rooting for the home team. Because home is way better than away. Away is not where the heart is. Bringing away to bacon? Why? Bacon is delicious. Away is where you hang your hat? You should be hung up by your underpanties. So why root for the away team when you can root for the home team with a great Pilsner taste of Miller Lite? Triple hops brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Bluefish baseball is back for the bottom half of the seventh inning. Prentice Redmond. Followed by Luis Lopez and Ramon Vasquez. Three, four, and five for the Bluefish. As Bridgeport has a six to two advantage. The first pitch of the inning is delivered over the middle of the plate for a called strike. The count at no balls and one strike. So far, Bale has two innings, one hit, one strikeout. He's been tremendous. And it appears as if there is a left-hander warming up as the pitch is stroked into shallow center field, but backpedaling to make the play, Ophelio Castro, the second baseman, one away. He's about 10 to 15 steps behind the lip of the outfield grass to the right of the second baseman bag, and it sets up Luis Lopez. So, Prentice. Designated hitter, number 19, Luis Lopez. Pops out to second base as Lopez is 0 for 2 today. Line drive to third, a walk and a run scores. And so struck out. Third baseman digs in. Outfielders a little bit angled towards left center, and the infielders placed around the perimeter. The pitch is right in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Third baseman Van Oster not expecting Lopez to hit anything other than a sharp ground ball line drive. He's he's about halfway back between the lip of each. Play the grass as the 0 1 is outside. One ball and one strike. Ramon Vasquez waits on deck. And another offering is poked, foul, or poked into right field, rather. And it should be playable for Jason Botts. Just got underneath him. And he corrals the baseball for out number two. We do apologize for that. F9. And Ramon Vasquez moves forward. Rackle so far, inning a third. Two hits and a run. Two strikeouts. He's pitched quite well, the exception of that that one little rally caused by the stolen base of Colin DeLome. He's been a major difference maker for the fish this season on the positive side. Ramon Vasquez, one for three today. Single and a run scored in the fourth inning, which the Bluefish sent ten batters to the plate. Two out pitches, ripped foul, right side. No balls and a strike. Take a look quickly at the scores from around the big leagues. There was one basketball game that took place earlier this afternoon, one hockey game that took place as well. Courtesy of ESPN.com as the 0-1 drifts outside, one ball and one strike. Taking a 
a quick glance at that. The San Antonio Spurs beat the Clippers today as the 1-1 one -one is struck foul down the left field line. Gonna play one ball and two strikes. 96 to 86. The Spurs were down by 22 after one quarter of play. They were down 33 to 11. The Spurs roared back and then only allowed eight points in the third quarter. The Spurs win 96-86. The 1-2 outside, two balls, two strikes. OKC and the Lakers, second straight night in La La Land. That's a 10-30 tip-off from Staples. And that comes following no hockey last night. There will be hockey tomorrow. And one of the busy busiest sports nights and sports weekends in the history of LA sports. The next pitch is up high, three balls and two strikes. The Dodgers, yes, they're far away in, in LA compared with where Staples is located. The three two is swung on and lifted into right center field. It'll drop in for a base hit as the center fielder Bubba Bell cuts it off and delivers the ball to the second baseman Ophelio Castro who is able to hold Ramon Vasquez to a single, a runner at first base with two men out to establish Brock Peterson. The, the Clippers, the Kings, and the Lakers playing this weekend in LA. Let's not forget about the Dodgers and their activities, although the Dodgers, they are playing in a different area against the St. Louis Cardinals. And in NHL activity, the Rangers shut out the Devils by a score of three to nothing from the Rock in Newark, New Jersey. All goals scored in the third period again by the Blue Shirts. The two out tosses over the outside corner 0-1. And, and they lead the series two games to one. The Kings lead their respective series against the Coyotes three games to nothing. In baseball, plenty of action taking place today. Plenty of interleague play as the 0-1 settles over the inside corner 0-2. Cincinnati Reds defeating the New York Yankees 6 to 5 this afternoon. The Mets lose their second in a row to the Toronto Blue Jays at Rogers Center 2 to nothing. And the Red Sox leading the Philadelphia Phillies 5 to 1 in the top half of the 4th inning with a runner at second. Those are your local updates, the 0-2. Here to be a slider outside, one ball and two strikes. There is more action brewing down the left field line for Sugarland. It's a right-handed pitcher. We cannot identify the number at this point, although we will do that as soon as we possibly can. 1-2 on its way. Stroked into left center field, but playable for Bubba Bell as he drifts towards left center. And the captain of the outfield makes the catch for the final out of the inning. And F8 sends down the Bluefish. A base hit, a runner left on. End of seven. Bridgeport leads by a score of 6-2. to two. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com and also streaming from BridgeportBluefish.com as well. We'll be right back after this. It feels like summer. It's a cool like summer. Hot babes all around. Backyard barbecues are where you'll be found. It gets pretty hot out, but it'll be all right because coolers are filled with ice cold cooling light. You step outside, little skirts galore. Be a garden for the ball game, that's what's in store. It's going to be a scorcher, but there's hope in sight. Refreshment awaits, Frost Brew Coors Light. Thanks, Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. We're doing from the Golden Colorado, great beer from Vegas, South Philly. At Miller Lite, we know there's only one thing baseball fans love as much as great Pilsner taste, and that's rooting for the home team. Because home is way better than away. Away is not where the heart is. Bringing away the bacon? Why? Bacon is delicious. Away is where you hang your hat? You should be hung up by your underpanties. So why root for the away team when you can root for the home team? With a great Pilsner taste of Miller Lite. Triple Hops uh, Brew Miller Lite. Taste great. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. do you want from Jonah Bayless? How about two scoreless innings and time to rest in the dugout 
for a job well done for Bayless. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. It is Rummy Lewis, the former Toronto Blue Jay from 2011. As the southpaw makes his way to the hill, he's had a very solid year and you wonder whether the Bluefish will just stick with Rami Lowe's for two innings or perhaps give some work to Jesse English, Joe Bateman, or perhaps Jorge Julio, who had a little bit of a struggle in the ninth inning yesterday when he allowed those four runs across in the ninth. The first pitch is upcoming from Lewis. Serves it up 91, 93 miles an hour from the left side as the southpaw deals and the first pitch winds inside, one ball and no strikes. Top of the eighth inning. In a 6-2 ball game with Ophelio Castro moving forward. He's followed by Josh Presley and Jimmy Van Ostren. 4-5 and 6 do up for the Skeeters. 1-0 by the southpaw. Is stroked towards second on a couple of hops. Corralled by Pedro Lopez. He throws to first in time. 4-3 to three to record the first out. Just a slight shuffle step from Pedro as he turned to his left and was able to get the baseball. A couple of hops. Look pretty smooth as Presley moves forward. I guess the one positive that you can take from yesterday's game is that the Bluefish did not allow Jason Botts to really get going. And because of that, just one hit in the series through his first 10 ABs. And Botts is a big bopper in the lineup as Presley takes low, one ball, no strikes. While Presley has not done that much hitting the baseball, he certainly reached base a few times. He's had three walks in the series. But when Presley and Botts are going well, forget about it. Sugarland is just about as good hitting the baseball out of the yard as they are hitting it to the alleys as the pitch is right in there for a strike, 0 2. Hit to the alleys for doubles, hit it out of the yard, home runs. Botts and Presley, two of the league's leaders over the last few years whenever they've competed. Rami Lewis lifts his leg and deals, 0-2. Slice foul off the end of the bat. Presley stays alive. MVP in 2008. Oh, that seems to be eons ago. There was a co-MVP 2010 between Aaron Hur and Scott Grimes. 2009 was Ray Navarrete. 2008 was this man at the plate, Presley. 0-2. Just off the corner, one ball, two strikes on a curveball. And then, of course, in 2011, there were quite a few players to, to select. From the bunch, the one-two. Fastball upstairs, two balls, two strikes. Bridgeport came close to winning the MVP award a few years back. Steve Moss got quite a few votes in 2010, but ultimately did not win the award because Aaron Hurd had more than 100 RBI and 20 home runs. Not to mention Grimes set an Atlantic League record and run scores. The pitch is granted right to Rami Lewis, who scampered off the mound to his left and was able to deliver the first two away. One to three put out for Presley. Now with two away, Jimmy Van Ostrin, perhaps making his last appearance of the night at the plate. Third base, number 25, Jimmy this Van bullpen Ostrin. has been a shutdown machine. Take a look at it. Jonah Bayless, ERA in the ones. And it's going to continue to go down because he did not allow a run. And imagine if he did. That, that ERA would increase dramatically. Ronnie Lewis entering today. Also with an ERA in the ones at 1.64. Two wins on his resume as well. The two out toss. Swung on and served foul to the right. No balls and one strike. I do not know how long it took for the bullpen to lose a game in a particular season. What I do know is this bullpen is 8-0 and this year. It does not have a loss through the first 21 games. The 0-1 is line base hit to the left of second towards the left of center. Van Ostrin comes up with a base hit. His second of the night, he's two for three with a walk. As he stands at first base, Ben Harrison moves forward. The bullpen, when it has 
when it has performed well, it has been great. Four or five innings, scoreless baseball. When it's not, it gets wrecked. Last night, Tarsi pitched well, but then Jorge Julio gave up the runs in the ninth inning. The two out toss, swerves outside, one ball and no strikes. And it's not been often, but it's been, it seems, one night for each pitcher, separate nights. Equating to the team ERA that it has, the two out toss is grounded to third, handled by Vasquez on the backhand. The long throw over the top, in time. Great range by Vasquez as he gets the five to three to end any threat. No runs, one hit, and one runner left on. End of seven and a half, Bridgeport six and Sugarland two. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. We'll be right back. Have you heard about the clubhouse? Being located in Fairfield, it has an unparalleled team of baseball and softball instructors offering private instruction, camps, team training, rentals, and best of all, the chance to learn from an all-pro team, including Mike Porzio, former MLB pitcher, and the Bluefish's very own Willie Upshaw. Open seven days a week. Stop in and meet our team. Or call us 203-292-8700 and visit us at the web, theclubhousect.com, and get the Major League experience. Baseball legend Henry Aaron reflects on his Hall of Fame legacy. But I think that since I played for the public, they need to share what I did in my life as first baseball. It's the proudest moment of my life to give everything to the Hall of Fame. I often tell people they need to get and see it. There is no other building in the world like the Hall of Fame in baseball. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the legacy. Connect with Cooperstown at BaseballHall.org. Mike Piazza talks about the Baseball Hall of Fame. It just connects you with the history of the game and uh, the, the tradition of this game and how far, how important this game is to, to the fabric of society. It's something I used to bond with my father and I will always, and I love to, to sort of teach my kids uh, the history of baseball. Preserving history, honoring excellence, connecting generations. Connect with Cooperstown at BaseballHall.org. Shark tooth, screwdriver, skeleton key, golf tee from the golf trip that you never went golfing on, grill fork, tuning fork, fork fork, the lucky fishing lure you snagged Alan with, sorry Alan, drumsticks, chopsticks from the place you met that Dallas-based flight attendant, a motel key, let's not talk about the motel key, a spark plug, a domino, a house key. How do these things make Miller Lite from a can even better? Find out May 2012. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Broadcast Network. Perry Miles here on BridgeportBluefish.com. Great to be here. The Bluefish offense has come to life tonight by scoring six runs on 11 hits as there is a new pitcher on the mound. Eric Krebs deals a first pitch strike on the outside corner. No balls and one strike. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. Colin DeLome sends one foul. The count, no balls and two strikes. This year, Krebs, as one of the players, the back end, one win, no losses, an ERA of 1.13. Opponents hitting 231 against the righties. The pitch is lined into right center field. Pretty well hit. No chance to get there as Jason Botts was steaming after it. Bubba Bell recovers the ball from center, not before Colin DeLome sprints into third base, standing up with a lead off triple. That ball was cranked to right center field. No chance for Jason Botts to get there and had Bubba Bell not gotten to the baseball where the PC Richard and Sun sign is located, that probably would have been an inside the park home run. Colin DeLome with a couple of extra base hits to break the schneid tonight. He had started out with that single. He's now at third base as Eddie Rogers steps forward 
and the infielders for the Skeeters play in. The pitch on its way from Krebs. Whiffs what appear to be a slider outside. No balls, one strike. Krebs, fastball. Certainly ripped the, ripped the first fastball by DeLome, and not the second one. Pitches upstairs, one ball and one strike. And this year, Krebs has allowed just six, six hits, now make it seven in those eight innings of work. But the reason why he has a low ERA is because he has allowed those extra base hits, and the pitch is ripped foul to the left side, but not allowing any walks. That was the third extra base hit that Krebs has allowed this season. Eric Krebs dealing to Eddie Rogers, who's 0 for 3. The two about to duke it out, the 1 2. Rogers reaches for strike three. He could not hold his bat back, and Rogers' struggles continue at the plate. At one point, he was leading the Bluefish in batting average. He's one of the, the top 10 players in RBI this season in the Atlantic League. But it's not been quite the same of late for Rogers. A, a couple more strikeouts and, and a little bit of a schneid as the first pitch slides inside. One ball, no strikes. 0 for 7 now in the series for Rogers. And he's 0 for his last 11. Same thing that Colin DeLome had. Next pitch is inside. One ball. Make it two balls and no strikes. It all started with a double play ball against the Somerset Patriots. Final up bat of the game. 2-0 is lifted into left center field. It drops in. 4-0 another base hit. Angel Flores drives in his second run of the night as Colin DeLome comes to the plate. The Bluefish lead now seven to two. With the infield drawn in, all it would take was a, a shallow fly to left center. That was a little bit better than a shallow fly. That was a soft line drive that found the perfect location. Left fielder number 17, Kennard Jones. As Kennard Jones steps up. 3-4-4 four, four. today. A single, a double, and another single before striking out. The one-out toss. Fastball inside, one ball, no strikes. Could this be the turnaround that the Bluefish desperately needed from the losing streak? And remember this. Tommy Lewis was in for an inning. Perhaps he'll go for another, the 1-0, right in, on in the corner. One ball and one strike. Post game show comes up following the conclusion of the ball game with scores and summaries from around the Atlantic League and the big leagues. 1-1, one, one, way outside on high. Two balls and a strike. The Sugarland Skeeters did not have this kind of performance last night. Ryan McKellar was dominant. One bad inning though made the difference tonight as the pitch is on the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes. Just the same way that the one hard inning for the Bluefish in the fifth turned the momentum towards the Skeeters last night. Baseball is a strange way of rewarding and punishing teams. 2-2 two -two is low. Three balls and two strikes. And everyone that's played the game knows it. Remember this. 70% of the time batters get out in the major leagues and they're Hall of Famers. The average ball player gets out 75 to 80% of the time. 3-2 is chopped on the ground towards short, handled by Iggy Suarez. He steps on the bag and then rifles it to first to record the double play to end the inning. A 6-3 DP to end the eighth, but the Bluefish tack on one more. It started out with a column to Lome triple, and then an Angel Flores single with one man out towards left center field. The Bluefish in command. They lead seven to two at the end of eight. Last chance for Sugarland to try to come back in this game. We'll be right back after this on BridgeportBluefish.com. 
have heard about the clubhouse, conveniently located in Fairfield. It has an unparalleled team of baseball and softball instructors offering private instruction, camps, team training, rentals, and best of all, the chance to learn from an all-pro team, including Mike Porzio, former MLB pitcher, and the Bluefish's very own Willie Upshaw. Open seven days a week. Stop in and meet our team. Or call us 203-292-8700 and visit us at the web, theclubhousect.com, and get the Major League experience. Baseball legend Henry Aaron reflects on his Hall of Fame legacy. I think that since I played for the public, they need to share what I did in my life as played baseball. It's the proudest moment of my life to give everything to the Hall of Fame. I often tell people they need to get and see it. There is no other building in the world like the Hall of Fame in baseball. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the legacy. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Mike Piazza talks about the Baseball Hall of Fame. It just connects you with the history of the game and uh, the, the tradition of this game and how far, how important this game is to, to the fabric of society. It's something I use to bond with my father and I will always, and I love to, to sort of teach my kids uh, the history of baseball. Preserving history, honoring excellence, connecting generations. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Shark tooth, screwdriver, skeleton key, golf tee from the golf trip that you never went golfing on, grill fork, tuning fork, fork fork, the lucky fishing lure you snagged Alan with, sorry Alan, drumsticks, chopsticks from the place you met that Dallas-based flight attendant, a motel key, let's not talk about the motel key, a spark plug, a domino, a house key. How do these things make Miller Lite from a can even better? Find out May 2012. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Bluefish baseball is back on the air from the ballpark at Harvard Yard, top half of the ninth inning. Rummy Lewis remains on the hill, and he unleashes a first pitch strike over the middle, 0-1-1. Rummy Lewis gave up a hit in one inning of work. In the eighth, he comes in for his second of the night. The 0-1 fastball upstairs. One ball and one strike to Iggy Suarez. He's followed by Cade Johnson and Bubba Bell. 840 on the East Coast. 605 start from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Many of the fans sticking around as they await the next offering. 1-1. One, one. Settles inside. Two balls and a strike. Suarez 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Grounded out to short and walked. Ramon Vasquez back pedals for a moment, not expecting a bunt from Suarez, the 2 1. Swung on and poked right back to guess who? Rami Lewis. He throws the first in time. One away. Suarez reached, chopped it on the ground. And it's about as good as, as Lewis can throw. Deliver the pitch to the outside corner, induce a chopper. And got right there. Kay Johnson moves forward. Two for three today. Came up with a two-run single in the fourth to right field. That accounts for the only runs for the Skeeters today as he nubs it to first. Peterson corrals and throws to Rami Lewis, converging to the first base bag as he touches it with the cleat two away on the three to one. The Bluefish are one out away from snapping a four-game losing streak. Bubba Bell is the last hope for the Skeeters. Fielder, number 10, Bubba Bell. The Bluefish win. They would improve to 13-9 and nine on the year. The Skeeters would fall to 8-14 and 14 this season. When the Bluefish were right, it was their offense coupled with their pitching that, that got them these advantages. The two out tosses over the outside corner 0-1. The team ERA when the team won just south of five, like four, almost four and a half. Run scoring, eight runs a game as the pitch is swung on and missed. No balls and two strikes. Bridgeport down to the final strike. Bayless and Lewis, they have been lighting it up on the mound. The 0-2 from Rummy. Left-hander deals, pitches sent foul as 
Bell stays alive. 0-2. Bell 0 for 4 tonight. Striking on the first, ground out in the third to first base, 6-3 in the fourth, and another chopper to the right side in the seventh inning. 3-1, the 0-2. Way inside, came close to hitting Bubba Bell. Unintentional. One ball and two strikes. There are plenty of oohs and ahs in the ballpark. Lots of them came in the fifth inning when Bridgeport struck for five. That was the big difference in the game. The five-run response following the two-run outburst for, or the two-run drive to right field by Kate Johnson as the pitch is swung on and missed. Strike three. Bubba Bell goes down. The Bluefish win the game, snap their four-game losing streak. The score from the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 7-2. to two. The postgame show comes to you right after this on BridgeportBluefish.com. Call this little ditty, America's Pastime. Summer's here and it feels pretty nice. Baseball and hot dogs and refreshment on ice. Some games are early, some are at night. But there's always a beer man with ice cold Coors Light. He's the most reliable player in the game. All it takes is calling his name. So even if your team doesn't hit any dingers, You'll have Frost Brewed Refreshment at the tips of your fingers. Thank you. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, with great beer comes great responsibility. I call this one best girlfriend ever. It had been a long day and an even longer week, so I headed toward the kitchen, refreshment I did seek. But after swinging open the fridge, I saw the most horrific sight. Not a single cold beverage, not a single Coors Light. I grabbed my keys, it was time to hit the store but stopped when I heard a knock at the door. It was my girlfriend, bearing gifts of Coors Light. Best girlfriend ever? You got that right. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, with great beer comes great responsibility. A poem entitled Coors Light Summer. It's a Coors Light Summer, hot babes all around. Backyard barbecues are where you'll be found. It gets pretty hot out, but it'll be all right because Coors are filled with ice cold Coors Light. You step outside, mini skirts galore your garden for the ball game that's what's in store it's going to be a scorcher but there's hope in sight refreshment awaits frost brewed coors light thank you frost brewed coors light the world's most refreshing beer coors brewing company golden colorado with great beer comes great responsibility at miller light we know there's only one thing baseball fans love as much as great pilsner taste and that's rooting for the home team because home is way better than away. away is not where the heart is bringing away to bacon why bacon is delicious Away is where you hang your hat? You should be hung up by your underpanties. So why root for the away team when you can root for the home team? With a great Pilsner taste of Miller Lite. Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. continues with the post game show here on bridgeportbluefish.com Perry Miles the final score the bluefish 7 and the skeeters 2 tonight a much different story for the Bridgeport bats they came away with 13 hits and 7 runs 2 runs and 7 base hits for the skeeters let's take a look at the scoring summary it all began in the 4th inning when Gilbert Delavara gave up a 1 out walk to Josh Presley, and then Jimmy Van Ostrin singled to set up runners at first and second. After a pass ball allowed the two base runners to advance, strike out by Harrison, a walk by Iggy Suarez to load the bases, then, or rather a walk by Iggy Suarez after Harrison struck out a single to right field to drive in two runs, and that was 
the two to nothing lead that had accounted for the only runs of the night for the Skeeters. In the fourth, it was all Bluefish. It began with a Prentice Redmond out that he recorded. He recorded two of the three outs in the, in the fourth, but it, Luis Lopez with one out, had a walk, Ramon Vasquez singled, and then Brock Peterson singled to left field to load the bases for Colin DeLoe, who slammed a bases clearing double to left center to give the Bluefish the first lead and the final lead of the night for Bridgeport after Angel Flores walked in Art Jones, singled with runners in the corners to push across the fourth run. Pedro Lopez singled to right field to account for the fifth run as Flores came to the plate and the Bluefish were in business 5-2. Scored another run in the sixth inning, single by DeLoma, stolen base, then advanced to third on a fly ball to right and a single to center field with one man out by Angel Flores to make it a 6-2 ball game. Similar people responsible for the seventh run of the night, a triple by Colin DeLoma. And with one away, RBI to left center field by Angel Flores to count for the final run of the night. Seven runs, 13 hits to two runs and seven base hits. The Bluefish win by that count and improved to 13 and nine this season. Sugarland falls to eight and 14 on the year. Livingston suffers the loss. He's now one and two, five innings of five run baseball. Eight hits, two walks and five Ks. Rackel, two innings, three hits and a run allowed, two strikeouts. Eric Krebs. An inning, two hits, and a run allowed with a strikeout. Gilbert De La Vara moves to one and one. His first Bluefish win of his career. Five innings, two runs, five hits, five walks, three Ks. Bale is two scoreless, a hit and a strikeout. Lewis, two innings of scoreless as well. One hit and a strikeout. Jones with his fourth double of the year. DeLome with his sixth. DeLome also had his second triple of the year. Johnson with two RBI, his fourth. Jones has 14, Lopez with six. DeLome now has 17, a team high as he surpassed Eddie Rogers. Angel Flores with two, he has two. Stolen bases, DeLome. He picked up his second and Kennard Jones was caught. He now has been caught six times. Sugarland left six on, or rather eight on, and Bridgeport left six on. Double play balls, two for Bridgeport and one for the Skeeters. Pass ball from Angel Flores. Strikeouts this game, eight for Sugarland staff, pitching staff in Bridgeport with five. Bell with a pair, Van Ostrin with one, Harrison, Suarez each with one, Jones, Lopez, Redman, the other Lopez, Pedro Lopez struck out once, Peterson a pair, Colin DeLome and Eddie Rogers with one. Five walks given up by the Bluefish staff and two for Sugarlands. Locke and Castro with Presley, Van Ostrin and Suarez joining the mix. Luis Lopez and Angel Flores, each with one. Time of the game, two hours and 36 minutes. The attendance, 3,003 from Bridgeport's the ballpark at Harbor Yard on this May 19th. When we come back on the Bluefish broadcast, we'll have the updated scores from around the Atlantic League, and then tune out with some Major League scores. Stay tuned. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. We'll be right back. Miller Lite wants you to win the greatest weekend that never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Miller Lite taste points for your chance to win one of 100 Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Lite and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happened. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Sweepstakes begins 5 one 12 and ends 8 one 12 For details, how to enter, and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pace of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold a commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, 
Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Inc. Miller Time. It's a rallying cry to the men around you, the ones that have become your brothers. A call to beer is answered with... Order me a Miller Light, I'll be there in 10. A night where your crew gets down to the task at hand that may or may not involve running tables, oh, nice drink. Drink. firing up the grill, oh, nice. or getting the band back together. Two, three, five. Just a few choice words spoken to the right men. Yeah. Men who crave a light beer that's never light on taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Great beer and great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Baseball is different in a lot of ways where the history of the sport means so much. Uh, and, and it's something we should never, you know, never forget. And I think the Hall of Fame has a way of reminding us. Anytime uh, that I've visited, it's just I'm like a little kid. You people at the Hall of Fame have done a great job of uh, preserving uh, the history of the game. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. I am here with Joey Jasseray of the Baseball Bluefish. Joey, that's... Bluefish Baseball returns with the post-game show. The final score is third is seven to two as bridgeport moves to 13 and nine sugarland falls to eight and 14 on the year let's take a look quickly for a moment at the atlantic league scores courtesy of pointstreet.com and atlanticleague.com as the bluefish were not the only ones in action long island taking on the somerset patriots five to three the ducks lead the patriots top half of the seventh inning Meanwhile, the Blue Crabs trail now 8-4 against Camden. It was once 8 to nothing, but the Blue Crabs seem to have battled back to a degree. That's in the bottom half of inning six. York and Lancaster nodded at two in the top half of the eighth inning from Barnstormer Country. Meanwhile, shift our focus to ESPN.com for latest on the NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball. First for the NBA, the Spurs lead the series against the Clippers three games to nothing after a 96 to 86 victory against LAC. And San Antonio looks to be certain to go to the Western Conference Finals. The Lakers and the Oklahoma City Thunder later tonight. The Rangers in NHL action defeat the New Jersey Devils three to nothing. Second shot out of the series for Henrik Lundqvist and the Blue Shirts now lead the series two games to one as focus shifts towards Monday for a contest against New Jersey at The Rock in Newark, New Jersey. In Major League Baseball, the Boston Red Sox lead the Philadelphia Phillies seven to four in the bottom of the fifth with runners at first and second. The Cincinnati Reds defeated the New York Yankees in interleague action six to five at Yankee Stadium and the New York Mets Lost today to the Toronto Blue Jays. Shot out two to nothing. That the score. Other scores right now. The White Sox leading the Cubs in the Windy City series four nothing at the end of six. Kansas City leading Arizona six to nothing in the bottom of the fifth with a runner at second base. In the Beltway series, Baltimore leads Washington six to one, and Houston now with a five to four lead in the Lone Star State series. Houston leading the Texas Rangers in the bottom of the fifth. Other scores, Cleveland 2, Miami nothing. It's almost like a football score. Pittsburgh edges Detroit by a score of 4-3. to three. One day after Verlander tries to get the no-hitter and comes up short. San Francisco blanks Oakland in the Bay Area Series 4 nothing. Minnesota edges Milwaukee 5-4. to four. Seattle a 10-3 winner against Colorado. Tampa Bay 5 and Atlanta 2. There is only one National League game taking place tonight. St. Louis and the L.A. Dodgers, L.A. Angels, and San Diego Padres at 10.05 tonight. Thank you for tuning in to the Bluefish broadcast today. Perry Miles here. For more information on Bluefish baseball, just go to the website, bridgeportbluefish.com, or you can send me an email, perrym86 at gmail.com, for the latest. The Bluefish and the Skeeters continue the series tomorrow afternoon. It is Paul Oseguera taking the hill for the Sugarland Skeeters, and it is expected that Dunieski Flores is going to take the hill for the Skeeters with Pedro Liriano acting 
as the piggyback. 205, first pitch, 145 for the pregame show on BridgeportBluefish.com. Thank you for tuning in. You can follow me on Twitter, just me, P. Miles. The final score one more time, the Bluefish 7 and the Skeeters 2. Have a wonderful night, and we will see you tomorrow afternoon for a first pitch of 205 and a 145 pregame show.